Hello everybody, it's Tetra. Sup? I hope you're ready for some Hero CCL action. I am here with your co-stream alternative cast, ready for some serious action. I'm dressed the part as this is the Hero CCL as presented by Roll20. Roll20 are not sponsoring me? Ne Excuse me, Roll20 nor CCL are sponsoring me for this, but I'm doing it because I love it. But I will give Roll20 a free shout out, just one, because I use their product multiple times a week to play D&D with my friends. I played literally before I came in here. We finished playing our game about 13 minutes ago, and now I'm here to cast. So I'm excited to do that so they can have that free shout out. And also, I do like this shirt. It is nice. So let's talk about what was going to be happening today. Welcome back to the Hero CCL, where we are going to be casting some of the best American Heroes of the Storm, with some players from Europe as well. In fact, there was a demographic released earlier today which showed that a very large chunk of the players are European. Feels good, which definitely goes to show if CCL ever decide to split the regions, I'm not sure if they will do that because it's probably making them quite a lot of money from the EU fans too. If they ever do decide to split the regions, there's definitely enough players out there for an EU version. We will see. For now, let's have a look at what's happening today. And, uh, well, that broke. Let me fix that. <laughs> One moment. That seems to have broken itself, but we could fix that pretty quickly here. Middle mouse. Boom. Got it in one. Feels amazing. So, let's get this going. As you can see, our first matchup for today will be 30k, who in the last two weeks have scored 6 and 0. Oh, they are putting on quite the performance in the last couple weeks. So we'll see how well they're able to perform today. And they'll be playing against Wild Hearts, who suffered their first defeat in week three against Team Oxygen, the current number one team. But they had their Chili Mountain game last week where they proceeded to burn every single medallion before the game even started and were very toxic. But it was all good. They were able to emerge victorious. And as such, Wild Heart still sit in second place, tied with crowd control, but winning on versus as Wild Heart were able to defeat crowd control earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to be getting ready for that. Of course, we have two games happening today. The second one will be Oxygen Esports, who are sitting in first place, 4 and 0, 12 and 4 in terms of maps. And they will be against Granite Gaming. Granite Gaming have had a pretty big glow up in the last few weeks after week one where they just struggled against Wild Hearts, but they were able to 3-0 sidestep kings who have been scaling very hard. They were 3-2 versus Simplicity, but then they did lose 3-1 versus Crowd Control. Crowd Control were struggling in the first game, but after that, we did see Granite Gaming really seem to struggle in games number three and four where Crowd Control were able to smack them a bit. So we'll have to see if they can scale themselves up and keep their path going because Granite Gaming They've got to step up a bit, especially against the number one team, Oxygen. Can they be the ones to hand Oxygen their first defeat? We will see as we prepare to head into that. Of course, we do have more games tomorrow as well, so make sure you tune into those. We will be having Chili Mountain versus Size Step Kings. Size Step Kings likely to be getting a big one on the board. But again, Chili Mountain have had a pretty big roster change here, so we'll see if that makes a change for them. They've used literally their last roster change to bring in some help in the form of Masquerade. Masquerade, who was traded away from 30k. 30k replacing with the ranged assassin player Azerite, someone who not many people are aware of. So it's quite interesting here. They've got their coach Mena, Mena as well, though. And Mena is very, very good at heroes and at coaching in general. So they should have a lot of extra power there. And this may have been a choice of Mena. And of course, like we said, Chili Mountain, they were able to pick up Ma uh, City Mountain picked up uh, Gia and Galneguna picking up the two Swedes there to make their roster almost entirely European getting rid of one of their few remaining European players in the form of Mysticles and CPX picking up Gia and Galneguna which is sad because I liked having Galneguna in my chat it's amazing but that's a pretty big glow up for Chili Mountain. We'll see if it makes a difference. There's some really strong players that they've been able to pick up. And Simplicity taking Masquerade off the hands of 30k. So very fun to see there. That should be a strong extra choice there. We'll see if it works out. Those are all the roster changes that we are up to date with. Should be interesting. 
The Masquerade pick for Simplicity is very interesting. They dropped Wit, which makes me quite sad. Wit was really performing well for them, but in terms of foot sheer performance levels, Masquerade does have a few more wins than Wit, of course, playing on the Washed Up roster, whereas Wit played on the Field the Heat roster. And Washed Up did have a few more higher finishes than Field the Heat, and as such, Masquerade will be picked up. It's risky because Wit was performing very, very well for them, but that is the team choice that we go with. Should be fun. For now, though, the only roster change we will see in this series will be the fact that 30k now have Azerite as opposed to Masquerade, which means Fury will be their starting tank, but that was already announced after last week. So, we're going to be getting ready to head into game number one as soon as possible, ladies and gentlemen, and we will get that all sorted for you. Again, First game is going to be 30k versus Wild Heart Esports. Wild Heart have been performing beautifully in the last few weeks. Ish it hots. Uh, sorry, ish tea hots. Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome. So, 30k, they've really scaled themselves up in the last week or so. Let's see if they can keep that going. They currently sit at 2 2, tied with simplicity, but with one map score increase. But. Now Wild, Heart e uh, now Wild Heart is their opponent, and Wild Heart is still sitting, as we already mentioned, in that tied second. But 30k, they definitely seem to have adjusted their playstyle from the earlier weeks, and they seem to be doing quite well. This is also the first week of play for the side of, uh, for CCL that is medallionless. So we'll see how that affects it. Teams like Wild Hearts especially were very leaning, were leaning very heavily on that triple bruiser composition, which relied heavily on the fact that medallions were a thing to make the most of terrain with Entomb main tank Leoric quite a few times. Will that strategy be changed now there's less crowd control on the board? They also played a lot of uh, Uther with Garden of Ancient Kings. With the extra 30, with the extra 50 armor on CC targets, relying on medallions to keep the people who need it urgently to be safe. But now, with medallion gone, cleanse suddenly becomes a lot more important, which is a big reason why Stukov, Brightwing, and uh, Deckard were the highest priority picks for a while. Now, people with cleanse are about to become a lot more important again. We'll see how quickly that starts to sade. Tried to make a law tried to make a lava raid, no go. I appreciate the attempt, but thank you, uh, thank you very much, Yoni T. It is appreciated. Worth a try. Add a go. But it, thank you for stopping by anyway. Everyone who spreads the word, everyone who is here supporting, is incredibly appreciated. We are not being paid. My sponsor is now gone for this. They only did it last month. But we are still here to cast the games. We do it because we love it. Any support you guys can give is incredibly appreciated. Subs, bits, donations for Streamlabs, buying merch, everything is appreciated. If you're looking for games this Christmas season or this holiday season, depending on what holiday you celebrate, or just the fact that you like it being the holidays, then check out my Humble Store bundle or my Humble Bundle links below. There is currently a great Humble Choice going on where you can join the Humble Choice, but the Humble Choice system where you pay monthly and get a th free month of the EA bundle, where you can get their EA monthly subscription service for one free month, and you can get access to most EA games. So it's worth a look, and if you go through my affiliate link, I get a bit of a kickback as well if you sign up or buy anything. So make sure you click through my link if you're looking for more games. You get them as cheap, if not cheaper, as they have their winter sale on from Steam a lot of the time, and you can sometimes support charities in the form of the bundles. So we're just waiting for the lobbies to be set up and us to get into them. Let's talk about the teams so far. Again, 30k, unsurprisingly, Brightwing being their most played hero. And we have our lobby, actually. So never mind. Let's jump into that. We can talk about it in the draft as we are going to be heading into game number one. Let's get this started. So yeah, Brightwing, top pick for 30k here. They very much like that Brightwing for BBJ. But again, we are in a very different style of play now. With the medallion removed... What kind of a difference is that going to make? 30k. On the left. They ban the Uther. They know Wild Hearts lean quite heavily on that Uther here. It's a very sensible pick. Seven out of seven games played on Uther. The second most amount of games played of any of their heroes, with Diva being first. And he really fits into their triple bruiser compositions quite well. The Medivh banned out away from Hasuobs. That is so sensible. Hasu, of course, has been playing that Medivh quite a lot. Medivh, by the way, along with D along with Chromie and Diva, the three top most banned heroes in the game. Diva being bad. Uh, sorry, no, most uh, popularity heroes are so the ones that appear in the most games. With Chromie appearing in 88% of the games, being banned 69% of the games. Nice. Diva be appearing in 82%, being banned 28%. And Medivh 
appearing in 78% of games and being banned in 66% of the games. And there's Cassia, who is actually number four, 76% of the games she has shown up in and 38% of them she has been banned in. So we have really covered the top of the board in terms of the most popular heroes as we see Tychus coming in. Tychus is definitely jumping up the board here, up to a 31% on the popularity rate, but he is making his way in and he has really become popular very recently. Bigger popular, Rexar being played quite a lot by a lot of players in multiple ways. Hasobs, in fact, played it last week as a ranged assassin. Let's see how Rexar is able to do as it comes in for Zergling, right now being hovered as the offlaner. You can see a lot of offlane Rexar, even on the maps where he's not usually picked up. And now with the Ranged Assassin Rexar from Hasu, Let's see how they do. Johanna and Deathwing! We're starting off with a very early Deathwing from Hyde, uh, from Ty here. We're not seeing, by the way, the new member Azerite for 30k. Sticking instead with their standard opening setup with Ty as the main ranged and Hasu as the second. They could always swap this Deathwing over to Liam for the offlane, but it would be very unexpected. This is not something 30k have been known to do running Deathwing in the offlane. It really has fallen out of favor in general. There goes Deckard again. We're still out of Medallion, but we're still not seeing the support priority shift yet. Very sensible though. Deckard is very, very strong. 75% win rate for 30k. So taking that out of action makes a lot of sense. What do we see from 30k now? The Leoric might actually be a reasonable ban here, even though we are not likely going to be seeing the triple bruiser composition. Leoric, there is the ban. Very sensible. It's shown up in six games for the side of Wild Hearts, which is their third most amount of games for any hero and has a 50% win rate, but they've run it with Triple Bruiser. They've run it as a as an off lane. They could very easily move Rexar to that range. They're just trying to avoid that Triple Bruiser composition. The Eric is very essential to that. So instead we see Gul'dan and Zagara. This is the second time we've seen Zagara, I believe, coming in from funds. It currently has a 100% win rate, a devouring more and uh, I believe, so rated Spine Star build the last time for funds. That's 30k now. How do they finish that up? They need a lot of wave clear. They maybe need some way to dive onto that Zagara. They have both their damage. So they need support and they need off lane. So maybe something a little bit more aggressive. They get Diva. That's going to be good for trying to get onto that back line. And Anduin. Now, fair warning. Diva loses pretty hard to Rexar if it's not played efficiently. So Liam's going to have to play this a little bit safer here. The Anduin adds a little bit of extra cleanse. It's a smart choice. It's great for the sustain and protection of the team. See how well they're able to do with that. This is the first Anduin showing, by the way, for 30k. They have yet to play Anduin, as we're going to see the Tyrael coming in as the main tank, by the looks of it. Pitkid going to be the one playing that unless they're going for a swap very interesting very interesting indeed this is the first Tyrael play as well that we have seen out of the side of Wild Heart Esports so they're definitely switching things up a bit the Zagara again we've already seen it before but it's their first Tyrael Rexar as well this is their first Rexar play so they're really swapping their strategy around now that the new patch has come out the crowd control is now very reliant on potentially devouring more which might as well on this map it's a small map the global rotation is okay but it's not ideal so there should be a more game the Gul'dan gonna be very effective they've definitely played that before currently have yet to win with it it's a unique draft, definitely out of the ordinary from what we've been seeing from Wild Hearts in the past. 30k, looking pretty normal to what they usually go for. Bring it out that Tychus again. They're currently only 1 and three, uh, one and 2 with it, but they have plenty of chances to improve that. And they're pretty happy with that Johanna. And the Anduin is a little bit newer as well, but not too much of an issue. Deathwing, they're currently 66.67% win rate, aka 2 and 1. Hey, Biggins, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day. So, overall, this is a bit more of a standard 30k draft with a bit of an adjustment in the support category. But a very out of the ordinary draft by Wild Hearts, who are very focused on trying to redefine the meta and just play their own style. We have the game set up. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's head into the game, ladies and gentlemen. On the right, Wild Heart Esports. On the left, it is 30k. 
And we're going to get this started. Classic Deathwing ranged assassin build. The Molten Blood coming in here. The game looks darker to me. I don't know what they've done to the clean feed. Feels bad. They've somehow made the clean feed look worse than usual. I legitimately don't know how they've done that. But they've found a way. They're going to head forwards. Because the clean feed is not good quality. This is all we get to use. And they've somehow made it look worse. As we see the pressure being applied. Full metal coming in for D.Va. See what they can do at the start and setup of this game. Pick it. Down to forward. Takes a little hit. Going to be able to back up before taking too much damage though. And it is a Tyrael going with the friendly shielding. Keeping the team sustained. Keeping them alive. In the meantime, look at Liam in the bot lane. Really just sustaining their holding back. Have they started the Bruiser Camp, actually? Yes, they have. Just now, Liam started the Bruiser Camp. They were scouting it and have just started it up. Liam is going to... We're going to see Ty rotate down and begin soaking against the Rexar to give Liam time to do that camp. Misha will spot this, though, but man advantage with, with Ty being down there should prevent this camp being stolen. Bears on the point. Liam doing a good job there. With Ty rotating in. That will guarantee the siege camp. But immediately, seeing no one there, we see the reaction coming out of Wild Hearts. They take down top tower. Very nice to see. Waves cleared out. Hasu doing the best they can there. Very fast wave clear. Looking good. Four stacks of Echo Corruption, the only stacking talent in this game thus far. We're, of course, on Hogger Patch. No medallions available, so we'll see how aggressive they go. We've made, Maybe we'll see Judgment Tyrael coming in, but I think this is probably still going to be a sanctification. Molten Breath, though, is a great setup follow-up to that. Maybe Bellowing Raw. It's going to be interesting to see. Should be a fun game either way. So, let's see where we go from here. For now, Unaverted makes the way up. Couple Corruption Stacks. There's the Infernus Standard build. Coming in for the uh, coming in for the Deathwing. Teriel's gonna go a little bit out of the order. We can see the Envelope Spines, by the way, from Zagara. So going for a little bit of extra long range burst as opposed to the more backline sustain damage. Ferryman, thank you very much for the sub. Very, very appreciated. Teriel gonna be staying a little bit out of the ordinary in terms of build. Instead of going for the laws of the bound by law, the usual level four talent, as Liam is dropped low. Pickett is going for Stalwart Angel, 25 extra armor while the Elderins might just active for two seconds after teleporting. Pickett trying to take on that main tank role a bit more efficiently here by shielding the team and also getting that little bit of extra sustain for themselves. Very smart. See how they can adjust to this. Zergling being zoned away by Ty for the moment. And remember, Ty, he's all about health regen here, so he's not going to be able to sustain himself in a long extended fight unless he can stay at range. And Misha is going to make that a little bit more difficult. And with the auto attack talent at level four already, getting that little bit, little bit of extra range and attack speed, trying to bully out Pitkin. Consistent attacks, bully them down, make the most of their heat, make the most of their long range in these team fights. Kill, of course, doesn't have a hard engage. Rush down for Liam, as you can see there, clearing the wave a little bit with that, uh, with those boosters. Roach has come out for some zoning. Ty, great interrupt again, holding it back. 25 gems turned in so far for 30k. Wild Hearts yet to get any of their gems in, but they do hit level 7 first, and only by a little bit. Hunger for power coming in for that Gul'dan. A little bit of extra damage here. And Anduin also going a little bit of out of the ordinary in terms of the of the actual talents. Bl the binding heal here. And when getting some self-sustain, every time he heals an ally, he gains 115 plus 4% per level extra healing. This will help keep him alive and sustain him through a lot of these fights. Fury turns in a couple more gems. Right now it's 22 to 39. Pickkid trying to channel. Will successfully do so. 25 gems just turned in. Yeah, quite a few talents. A little bit out of the ordinary here. Zergling takes some damage. Not enough to capitalize. Tyrael and Zagara holding on for their level 7s. Yet to pick Big Stun, interrupting the mech. That is a great kill from Wildheart. Able to kill off D.Va before she could set up and capitalize. 
So Tyrael, what could he be holding on to? Swift Retribution would be the go-to talent here. The only other option is perhaps Purge, Evil, or Reciprocate. Reciprocate would potentially give away that they might be going Judgment, as it's a little bit of extra burst damage, and Purge Evil would give Tyrael a lot of extra attack damage. We do see the Bile drop coming in for Zagara, no surprises there, and already gaining a stack. This is to go into the percentage damage as the game goes on. Tyrael does go for Reciprocate. There's a chance we're going for a Judgment Star build here. Very burst focused. As they begin to step up. It's also a good chunk of wave clear. Of course, when the shield expires, it explodes on Tyrael, doing a bit of damage to nearby enemies. Condemn from Fury as unaverted sieges them in. Doing as much pressure as they can. Looking good so far. Here comes Cataclysm across the Web Weaver, doing a lot of damage there. And Pitkin will be popped, stunned out by Ty in that World Breaker form. They do take out D.Va again, though, making that a one-for-one. One. Fury dropping quite low. Good route from BBJ, but this push is relentless with level 10 hit. We see the move forward. We don't see the sanctification, but Zergling taken out, dived way too deep. Drops 14 gems. So we see the retreat coming out for the members of Wildheart. Falling Sword, Light Bomb, boom! Unaverted, take it out. Classic combo as Funs drops the Devouring Maw. Does not catch Hasu, Buds with the heal. Ty trying to cut off the escape. Funs running for their life, bellowing roar. And Funs will escape. What a god gets out of that fight. But the turn-in will now be achieved by 30k. The Light Bomb Falling Sword. Classic combo, very old-fashioned, but the backline is Sagara Gul'dan Stukov. Of course, if you can get onto them, you're going to cause some chaos. This is why Massive Shove is coming out as well to try and keep them safe, but you need to time it. There's no medallion to protect you from this dive anymore. You're just going to eat the pain. Let's see what they can do about it. Web Weavers making their way in. Rexart clearing bot. Rest of the team dealing with top, but mid is also taking assault. So we see the rotation down there from Wild Hearts, as that is where 30k is. And they have to defend against 30k. There's the Odin. Already helping with the siege. Diva made her way back down to bot to duel the Rexar. Liam has played this game very, very safe, and as such has not lost this game as hard as you would normally do so against a Rexar as a diva. He's just playing a little bit further back. Hey, Mepeg... 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 Ah! Mepegida! I'm always going to get it wrong, but thank you! <laughs> never going to pronounce it right. That's my curse. I never pronounce anyone's names right. Seven stacks of Bile Drop already for Zagara. Falling Sword, Light Bomb... Boom, stun, Zergling is dead. This is just going to keep happening. Anyone who is close enough for Falling Sword to reach will be picked off by this combo. They will just keep being burst. No medallion plus no cleanse means there is no reaction from Wild Hearts. All they could do is try and sank through this in team fights. But until then, this is just going to keep happening from 30k. It's an old strat, just under half a year old now, but it's just going to keep working. Healing comes out. We do see the bruisers coming out into the mid lane. For the side of Wildheart Esports. Not grabbed by 30k. So that's a good defensive tool for Wildheart. Hey, Beowulf. Fury going to do a good job clearing this out. Great grenade. Really helping with the wave clear. Hasu doing a good job. Ty helping the top web weaver. So far, they've not been able to take out a four. They really want to get one with this push. Let's see what they can do. Top is looking a little vulnerable. It's mostly defensive attention has been focused onto mid lane. Ty lets the Web Weaver push up. Falling Sword, Light Bomb, immediate CC. The Devouring War was good. There's the Sank. They actually got a good setup that time, preventing BBJ from following up. Self Destruct has to be used to disengage. Great escape there. And fantastic counterplay by Wild Hearts, using the Devouring Mort not just to try and catch people, but actually to zone off the engage point to give the rest of Wild Hearts an escape. Multiple Breath comes out. They have Infernus. They have the Energy Reduction. They don't yet have Conflagration for the highest damage output. Tyker's like classic build. Keeping everything sustained, keeping everyone alive. Johanna, holy fire. We don't see that talent too often, but it really helps the wave clear. And it's going to help clear out Zagara's neutrals. Great little talent. Although, 
Oh, leap of faith. I was about to say, Fury's dead. It won't matter what talent he picked. But in this case, BBJ on point with that leap of faith. Using it a little early this time, but better safe than sorry. Holy ground. Very good talent pick by Pitkid here. He wants to zone people away. Keep control of the map. Their escapes. Took a little bit of damage, but we'll stay alive. Health stone for the Gul'dan. Looking good so far. Good defense coming in from the side of Wild Art Esports again. Able to hold most of their lanes. They lost their forts, but that was after two and a bit web weavers and the sincere amount of push coming in from 30k. They've been able to hold on to this quite well, only being three kills down despite the very hard to defeat Wombo. They might have more potential moving into the late game to hold this back. But right now, 30k, they're still in the driver's seat. They still have control. They grab their bruiser camp. The one thing 30k cannot do safely right now is boss. Right now, they're just trying to soak up minions, get gems for another turn in. Because if they try and get boss, horrify plus holy ground plus sank plus massive shove means there's a get plus devouring more, in fact, means there's a very good chance that Wildheart will steal it from them. It's the best way they could throw. So as such, 30k, they played as slow, they played as safe, and they will not try and boss while everyone is up. And I doubt they'll even boss when it's anything less than two people up. Anything more than two people up, sorry. Rexar finishes Hunter Gatherer. Diva gets that diverting power. Full Q build coming in for Tychus. Unfortunately, we won't see the Q level 20. We never get to see that one. That will become a big red button. The Tychus level 20 is very silly, though. Getting extra armor while you do it. As do we do with the I can do this all day. They try to focus down the bear. Micro missiles is good, but the bear will be sustained. Zergling keeps Misha alive as they move on to the defensive position. Web Weaver number three wave coming in for 30k as they push on to keeps now. They have conflagration. That's the big power spike diverting power. to try and zone them out. There's only two bits. There's only three bits of CC from Wildheart. So that defense matrix will stay up pretty heavily. Massive shove used on Tahasu. No level 20 available for them as they push forward. Down goes Misha. Pickett trying to hold. The Web Weaver has arrived. Dark wave. Doesn't catch anyone. They're able to pull that off to the side. Flaguration, lots of damage done to Pit Kid there. See just how deadly that actually is. Ultimate Breath is good. Dark Wave does hit the keep, but the keep survives. But there's still two other waves to deal with. And 30k, they're just going to keep pushing. Their minion wave has arrived. Funds, going to try and de-push that. Try and defend. Level 16 just around the corner for Wild Heart Esports. But they are trying to hold steady. They will lose this keep, though. Minions will finish the job. The other two waves will be defended, though. We will see Zergling able to finish that one off. And Unaverted was able to take out the one in the top lane. Solid defense from Wildheart, but 30k are just crawling further and further ahead. Here comes that level 20. Here comes that level 16. This is where we might be able to see a comeback from Wildheart. They might even live to level 16. Goodbye, bear. Paradra crew forging, cooldown reduction on that holy ground from Pitkid. Quick mini stun from Liam. They're trying to pick up a kill. You can see Fury. He was hovering around, looking to see if it was worth dropping the uh, the Falling Sword. Did not find the opportunity, though. Holy Ground is burned. They dive in, begin starting their way on the camp, but they can't really commit to it first. Holy Ground does get Ty this time, but the stun from Ty, that one breaker form, is good. Horrify onto the bear and Pit Kid. And Conflagration will burn off and force everyone to back out. Pit Kid's still looking for Ty, though. They burned Unleashed the Boars to force that disengage. But that was a worth fight. Burning the Unleashed the Boars in exchange for Bellowing Roar is actually pretty reasonable for the side of Wild Hearts. That Bellowing Roar is a fantastic disengage tool. And, they have, and we see Wild Hearts, they have more than enough actual engage tools to not have to worry about it. Good in reaction. Burned onto Liam. Pick it backs away. They're still being sieged, though, but there's plenty of gems left to get for 30k. They are not getting their next turn in for a while. So they're going to be playing a little bit further back. Ty sustains himself back to full. Not even going to land on anyone. Need those cooldowns up as quick as possible. Light Bob. Going to be perfectly timed. They look first, people, but they only get the bear. Here comes Catacons onto the back line, devouring more. Gets Funs out, but Funs still being zoned away. They're forced to retreat into the boss pit. Funs is completely isolated. The Horrify is trying to get Funs out. Conflagration is enough to get the kill. Sank is dropped way too late. And they're finally able to kill off Funs. They burnt everything for this, but they're able to pick up the kill. 
great attempt by Wild Hearts to try and escape that. But that was a little brutal by the side of 30k, committing everything to it. They acquired the kill. Now they will get the boss. Seeing Horrify and Sank burned, they feel safe getting the boss. Holy Ground is the only thing that could stop them at this point. Turdent being delayed by Liam. Can he do it again? Yes, he can. Bud's trying one more time. Bear is back. Liam, he's actually going to hold them back. What a play by this D.Va player. Boss is acquired. Still not enough gems. 35 needed for a turn in by 30k. Looks like they might finally be willing to give away the turn in because they're all pushing top lane. But it's not being rescued by Wild Hearts. They choose to defend top lane and try and deal with the boss instead. Here's level 20 advantage for the side of 30k. Stood in the fire. Glyph of Faith. That will get them a lot of extra sustain with that glyph. Falling Sword with Heaven's Fury tries to land. Doesn't do it. No one in trouble. Keep is down. Boss, though, still with over half health. Not a great situation for Wild Hearts to be here, but they still try to focus onto that boss. Good dodge by Pitkin. The Molten Breath is good. Boss will be taken out, and 30k are forced to disengage. Wild Hearts still surviving. They kept the shield up. Light Bomb, Falling Sword, and Heaven's Fury. That cooldown on, Light Bomb, on Falling Sword is back to 10 seconds as the focus comes in. Sanctification for the turnaround onto Ty Unaverted will be taken out by Fury and by Hasu, though, as this fight, Deathwing, goes down. The mech is taken out, actually. And that's a one for one in, in favor of Wild Hearts because they get the comeback XP here. It's only going to eat that big red button, though. And they are zoned away. The great turnaround and focus onto Deathwing, executed very well despite losing Ghoul Dan. This is a pretty good fight for Wild Hearts. They hold the line here. Wild Hearts still in this fight as we do see bot lane pushing up here. Bud's clearing out as fast as he can. They've got to keep these lanes pushed. Still so many gems left for 30k to get. All the lanes are pushed up. All they can do is get camps here. Liam's mech is back. That will help him get this siege camp so easily with a timing attack, by the way, on level 20. Just under a third of a level to go for Wild Hearts. Well, they have their own level 20. And that might keep them in this. Did they go for Haunt for the armor reduction? Or did they go for Demon Circle to keep that cooldown alive? Those are the two options, I would say, on this level. I'd say it's more likely to be the Demon Circle because it gets out of the teleport, uh, the just insane teleport engage of the Johanna. So I think Demon Circle is more likely from Gul'dan, but we will have to see. Level 20 is popped. Tyrant Moor coming in. There is that Demon Circle. Holy Arena and Kill Command are the unsurprising picks here. And when push comes to shove. For the Stukov. Micro Missiles coming in. Catching D.Va. Holy Ground will isolate the point and they disengage. Good play. Look at the Demon Circle placement though. Gul'dan, unaverted, placing them quite close to where the fights are. He doesn't want to be out of the fights. He just wants to dodge Johanna. He doesn't want to be back in base safe. He, he wants to stay in the fight. He just doesn't want to die. It's a clutch pickup here. Gara, by the way, went for the Spell Shield to try and uh, dodge a little bit of that incoming damage. It's Liam going to eat some Corruption. His Echo Corruption is complete. And we have that Corrosive Saliva for the Zagara. A lot of extra damage here. Percentage damage. And now with that Vile Drop complete, the Extra Roach is going to do a lot more damage to heroes here. Pickett clearing out the lane. Last keep falling, though. That's the final remaining keep. Sneaky Red Web Weaver turn in though, Wild Hearts. This will help them clear and they will save bottom keep. This is really just damage control though. As again, 30k, they've just bought themselves more time. Now the minion wave is going to be pushing up to them and they're going to finally get those gems. That might finally be enough for them to get the turn in. They creep their way forward. Their way forward, looking for the opportunity to engage. Falling Sword doesn't catch anyone. They didn't burn the light bomb on that. And again, they used Heaven's Fury to get that cooldown reduction so Fury can do it again. Mid Fort dropped low. Misha taken out. The Fort lived. Heaven's Fury, that Falling Sword though, five seconds out. That Heaven's Fury cooldown reduction. So much value. They take out top four.
That's going to be the first two forts available for Wild Hearts. They're going to look to hold mid. They have enough gems for a third, for a second turn in here. This will actually be their third turn in total, but a second in a row for this objective. If they can keep these chaining together, they might have a chance. They have level 20s. Fury steps up. Demon Circle just being relocated so consistently by Unaverted. You look at that, playing it a little bit far back, but the turn in happens. Pitkin gets in the gems. Wild Heart Esports, they're not going down without a fight. They hold themselves through this. They keep control. Let's see what they can do. The Holy Ground is used to zone away. Wild Hearts, they're not going down yet. 30k, they've got to close out this game somehow, and it looks like it might just be a fight. They have, they have that kill potential, of course, immediately with that Falling Sword Light Bomb strategy. They need to make sure they execute it correctly. That Holy Arena will mean that if they don't get the kills, the turnaround could be devastating. Bottom Web Weaver will take out the fort. There's enough gems available here for Wild Hearts to potentially go for a third turn. And with 130 gems, they will have enough. They're down to 60. They're down to 65, I believe, 67. But they have enough. Lots of damage being done to Hasu. Bear dropped low. Bear survives. Keep opened up, but not acquired. Still no keeps for Wild Hearts, but they have their third turn in. The patience of Wild Heart Esports right now. Keeping them in this game. Demon Circle immediately replaced. They trap boss. They have enough for another turn in. And I think that's the strat here. Get boss as fast as possible. Again, we mentioned they have the boss control tools, but it's been noticed. 30k, they realize. Boss is leashed. Both teams have enough for a turn in now. 86 gems in the hands of Wild Heart Esports. Great map presence. Great knowledge by 30k. Wild Heart Esports trying to rely on the fact that they've turned in bot lane the last few times. Pit Kid going to eat a lot of damage. That Conflagration Infernus will really chunk you. Demon Circle replaced. They try to take out Liam. They're very grouped. Falling Sword Light Bomb. Demon Circle is good. Unaverted dodges. Here's Cataclysm into the backline. Full commitment. Bellowing Roar. And Stukov is going to be dropped down. No! The life, the great use. Oh, Massive Shove! The great use of the Tyrant more to keep him alive. And the Massive Shove to take out the self-destructing mech. There's the Holy Ground. And it's a full disengage out of Wild Heart Esports. They stay alive. But immediately, the objectives are open for 30k. They move for the turn in. We see the interrupts onto bot lane happening. But top is still happening undefended. Do they have enough gems to finish the turn in? It's interrupted. Web Weavers denied by Wild Heart Esports. They keep themselves in this game. What a play. Fury. Stunned out. Zergling has he extended too far. Falling Sword is available once again. Zergling dropped low micro missiles using the minions to protect Falling Sword. Feign death to dodge the shots, but he's still going to take the light bomb. And there's the combo. Too much CC as Zergling is the first to fall. There's the retreat coming out. Everyone else is going to be able to survive from the side of Wild Hearts, but that is finally going to be the turn in Pitkin. He comes back in. They go in with the 4v5. There's the Holy Arena. They try to force their way forward, but the, but the Great Molten Breath keeps them zoned. Owned. They're fighting 4v5 right now, but Wild Hearts just can't let that turn in happen. They have to take these fights. They can't let the turn in happen. In fact, 23 gems currently being turned in by Tyrael. Burns for the delay. Light Falling Sword. The Devouring more works, but the team was split. Unaverted. Not in the great spot. Will Demon Circle himself out. They try to interrupt the turn in, but Hasu finally gets his gems with that staggered death. It does look like 30k after a very long fight will be able to take this Falling Sword. The Horror Fight is used, but that won't affect Ty as the core will be focused down. That's a great re-engage from 30k. A slow and patient game. Wild Hearts very nearly finding their footing, but one fight taking out that Rexar was all that they needed. 30k able to take game number one of this best of five. And they will take the lead in this series. The big red button able to finish the job.
Game one going in favor of 30k in this best of five series. A solid performance coming in by them, putting on a great show. Very well played. 30k take the lead again. They are so far in the last three weeks now. In the last three weeks now, they are now uh, seven and zero. Oh. If they can keep this up, they could have a nine and zero oh three weeks. I don't think any team has achieved an undefeated run so long. I'll have to double check that. Here are the stats for you. Standard builds, pretty much for everyone here. Johanna going a little bit, more, going back into the hold your ground build, very important these days. And I mean, like we said, a little bit of the extra self sustain, very helpful, very important. That was a good, that was a well played composition. Great early game kills from the classic Fury BBJ combo with the falling sword into the light bomb. Very easy pickups there. Great play from funds. Those are some good mores, but they never actually got the money engages they wanted because all they could ever do was one person. And that person was the person who was literally coming in to try it and just destroy them. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. So, we'll be getting ready for game number two in this best of five. Solid performance, though. Able to get that Anduin. First Anduin the 30k have shown a very surprised pickup here. And they've already managed to achieve a victory with it. So very fun to see. Well played, everybody. Very nicely done. Also, by the way, big thank you to everyone who's been supporting the channel so far and supporting my CCL cast. I've been having a lovely time. And even though I took like three months off streaming for a while because of just mental stuff. But you guys have been so supportive since I've been back. Especially I've been focusing more on the casting now as opposed to playing the game because that makes me angry. When I play it, when I play it on stream, it makes me angry. But uh, the support you guys have been so amazing that the fact that we're on 80 subs, 80 subs again, which is really appreciated. It's a huge deal to be able to help support me in such a big way. We're only 20 subs off of 100 subs, which would be so appreciated. If we could hit that by Christmas, I would be astounded. Um, in terms of casting CCL, I will still be casting all the other days. Although, as a heads up, on the 13th, there is no clean feed. CCL are not providing a clean feed on the 13th. They've not given us a reason. But uh, I will be provide. But I will still be providing casting. I'll just be muting the mainstream and using that one. So I'll put on some uh, some the draft music I use, and we'll use that instead. But that is how we're going to have to do the cast then. So the games will still be available. But I will not be able to bring you them with the clean feed. So apologies for that. Yeah, the 30k draft was very, very strong indeed. Makes us all angry too. I like playing heroes. It's just I don't... I find playing it on stream very annoying. I don't know why. I think it's just the fact that I have to talk and play at the same time makes me a little stressed. But uh, it is all good. But yeah, if we get hit 100 subs by, the, by Christmas, that'd be amazing. I know that's a really unrealistic go a goal because that's 20 subs in 20 days i know that's very unlikely but we're gonna try we are going to try that is the goal we'll see what we can do if not everyone who is subbing again thank you so so much it is so appreciated it's actually more than 20 subs because obviously subs expire from the time they were subbed so anyone who subbed before that if their sub expires then that will take the number down but either way I want to I want to believe it. if not I will take every bit of support people can give me there is also now the option to uh, uh, become a member on YouTube if subbing on Twitch is too expensive then you can actually become a member on YouTube where you get most of the exact same content just without the option to interact live as such there are multiple subscription tiers that you can go in for if you want something more akin to Twitch then there is the standard Twitch uh, Twitch price tier thank you Sorkis for the extra for the extra subscription. Very appreciated with your tier one. Very appreciated indeed. But yeah, there's the uh, the standard Twitch price subscription, but there is also a 99 pence subscription available for you on YouTube. So if you're not looking to spend that little bit of extra money, you could support me for as little as 99 pence per month. It would be very appreciated if you did. There's some more expensive tiers as well, but I don't expect anyone to use those, but it is very effective. Yes, you could support me for the cost of 99 Loftaloons. If I knew the lyrics to that, I would sing it, but I don't. Alrighty, but for now, again, thank you everyone for your support. Subs, donations, members on YouTube, everyone who has bought merchandise in the past. It is all very appreciated. I still love casting. 
Despite the fact of not being hired by CCL, I'm still willing to just keep casting and keep bringing you the game because I love it. I've stuck around. I never left Heroes. I never committed to I never committed to another game. I tried dipping my my toes, but I never stopped casting Heroes. And I will continue to keep doing so until the, so here's here's the situation. When I first started casting Heroes, I started casting Heroes from the bottom. I'd cast a little bit of StarCraft with people uh, in the past, and the big event I did end up being Gfinity 3. And I did that. That was with Kaldor. That was with Bling. That was with uh, Hastam, I believe. It was with quite a few very strong people, some very talented people. Joe Rosar and Pewy were there, if you recognize some of the old people from the UK scene. But I, that's the, the height of skill that I got to. Is we do have our draft set up, so I'll talk about it in this. So I started Heroes basically from nothing and was resoundly ignored for all events. Kaldor was, the, Kaldor was the person who noticed me and picked me up. I was chosen to do uh, Dreamhack, and then uh, and Kaldor basically came in. They hired him instead, but he just said he wanted to do it with me, which was very appreciated. But I was still ignored by everyone who had any authority except for Dreamhack. And the second Dreamhack were working with Blizzard, Dreamhack stopped hiring me. Blizzard did not want to hire me for the first part. They were working very heavily with ESL, and ESL inserted their own people. This is how we got our Tolls, this is how we got our Kalaris. They very much tried to insert their own people. This is how we got our Technolix, this is how we got our Crumbs. There was a lot of focus on stuff like that. But there was a lot of focus from ESL putting their own people in, so I was ignored. Then the game started going in further, and I was still ignored. After ESL stopped being involved, I was still ignored, and I still kept doing it. I still kept casting. I was invited to a mid-season, I got to mid-season brawl and that was not picked for a whole year from Blizzard's words, despite the fact that commentators within HGC were throwing in the, uh, people within HGC, all the, a lot of the casters and crew were telling them that Tetra is good and you should be inviting him to the events. Despite that, their, their sentence to me was, we want to test other talent. And they did for an entire year and I got almost no payment outside of regular HGC stuff for an entire year. I got one pay rise the entire time I did HGC for three, for HGC and Blizzard stuff for three years. One pay rise. And I was able to do as much as I could for that. But they did not want to work for me. They did not seem to want to hire me. But every time there was an event coming around, they did that. They didn't seem to want to consider me for HGC positions when they came around for the actual Los Angeles office. They did not care. But I don't give up. I keep casting. Because I like doing this. And Blizzard finally realized that. They actually started bringing me out to all the events. They brought me to the BlizzCons. They brought me to the Crucibles. They brought me to the Western Clashes, the Eastern Clashes, the Mid-Season Brawls. Blizzard realized it. And I will make everyone who is watching realize it as well because I am not done. I keep casting because I like doing it. And I will keep casting until everyone realizes that I am here to stay and I'm going to keep doing this until this game is literally six feet under because I like doing it. I will not give up. Never have, never will. Deathwing banned. Well deserved. Let's talk about this draft. Medivh actually made it through the draft. A very risky play from 30k, giving that up and not allowing it and not banning it in the first rotation. Wild Hearts. This is their sec this is their third Medivh play, currently at a 50-50 win rate so far. Let's see what they do. Yorel. Gonna be picked up here. That's a very strong pick for Liam. With D.Va banned out, they want to get control over the over the off lane, and the Grey Main Extra Burst should be good. They hired who they hired for whatever reasons they had, Amplified Soul. I, for, for starters, I love Grubby. I think he is fantastic. Me, me casting with him was some of my favorite casting I've ever done during the, uh, during the Open Division. Rexar is back. With Sylvanas Medivh, that's a very solid damage output. The Rexar's going to be good for controlling Yvrel here. Rexar's going to be playing the back line here. Rexar's going to be playing a little bit further back. Yvrel, if they, she can jump onto the actual half or half ogre part and avoid the bear, then Yvrel can be very, very effective at dealing with that Rexar. 30k now. Second damage dealer with Grayman on the board. Going to pick up that Tychus again. 
Great double tank killing potential here. Great ways to try and deal with that Diablo. And Tychus, a little bit of longer damage over time. Because Greymane, of course, is good against Medivh, assuming that Force of Will is down. Greymane's damage is a little bit more burst heavy. So if he can get around Force of Will, he can do a very good job there. We'll see what he can do. Tychus, he has a bit more of a longer damage over time style with the with the minigun, of course. The grenade is a bit more bursty, but again, if you can time that around the force of will, you can get a really solid damage output. So they've actually mixed up the damage outputs, and I think 30k have a solid draft here. My concern is I never vote against Medivh, so I'm going to be voting for Wild Hearts here because I think with that Medivh, Tyke, uh, Medivh Diablo combo, they have a fantastic backline engage setup that should give them a lot of value. All they have to do is to really play around that Stukov, and that should give them a good setup. I too love this jersey. I do love Roll20. I use it I use it multiple times a week. It is good. Good good program. Feels decent. So, we shall be getting ready to jump into game number two as soon as possible, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, it looks like that is now. So, let's get this rolling, ladies and gentlemen. On the left-hand side, it shall be 30k with Tai, Hasu, BBJ, Fury... And of course, Liam on the right, Wild Hearts with Pit Kid, Buds, Zergling, uh, sorry, not Zergling, uh, Unaverted. And, oh man, they went too fast. They went too fast. I didn't see, I didn't see everything. Either way, we'll talk about when I'm near here in lane. So, we're going to get this going. 30k into the center of the map. Let's see who if they can catch anyone with Fury playing a little bit more aggressive. They've got BBJ and Hasu. That's more than enough. Funds. Buds going to be scouting out, but neither one going to go in for the hard engage. Might have the Banshee Queen, by the way, at level one for that Sylvanas. See if they choose to do anything with that. At the moment, it looks like no. <laughs> Dropping the spray. Fun seeing Fury chilling in the center of the map. Neither team going to be going any form of aggressive. Look how safe they're playing. The only player even past the halfway point here is going to be now Pit Kid and Zergling. But it was a pick. It was Zergling with that Misha as Liam is forced back. Neither team wanting to go for any early engages. Finally, we see the four man in bot lane. Fury is revealed. So he just comes into the lane. Nothing he can do about hiding because Funz is there. However, look at this. Fury starting. With a regen globe talent go with the prog rock. So he might have missed a wave here. And as such, will be a little bit slower on the stacking. Very interesting. Funds yet to land. Le yet to land and land a sh let to land a shot, sorry. Very nearly messed up my sentence there. There we go. First stack of that arcane rift is acquired. Black arrow already being used to guarantee this camp. And we don't see the engage with the with the rotation of gr of the Rexar. We saw them choosing to back up 30k, not wanting to take that fight. Greyman has made his way up to start on top camp. We're all going to come over as well and see it. Misha will pop in and see that this camp is not really going to be assailable and back up. Lurking arm. Overpower onto Fury with the root follow-up. Very nicely done by Buds. They hold for now. Have to be careful of that lurking. Ah, oh, more stacks gonna be gained very effectively. Nice to see. Hey, Biggins. In answer to that question, it's a little late for Cowdor for starters, and for second, if we were doing that, we'd have to cast on. Uh, he would want to cast on his channel, and I'd want to cast on mine, and all my viewership would go away. So I would not ask to do it with him, because I'd lose all my viewership and therefore all my income. As we do see the Bruiser camp being picked up, being cleared out. Both teams grabbing that. 30k, going to get theirs a little quicker, thanks to the insane camp clear speed of the Rhaegar of the Greymane and the Stukov. Both of them having insane auto attack damage. Unaverted, who did not go for the Merc Queen. They do take a little bit of damage from the camp, but they will grab it in time. They went for a possession for quick speed. We need to be a sponsor or an org. Exactly. And I doubt that CCL have any intention of doing that anytime soon. Ty going to back up. Making their way onto the point. Hasu going to start onto the Immortal. Good stun onto Fury. Fury will back up and begin help with the Immortal race, which they're going to get their halftime show very quickly. 
Good power side. Fury backs up. Keeps them alive. Fury dropping it a little low, but tanks it enough. Unaverted. Getting to a better position where they're going to be less likely ganked. And they go to try and start on that immortal themselves. Halftime show. Still much closer for 30k, but all the defense has been abandoned. Immortal still alive, though. They still look to siege. It's a big chunk of immortal taken away here. Good job. Halftime show finally achieved. 30k. Still the lead here, but Wild Hearts. They seem to have the better aggression at this early stage. They're actually a man down here because Liam. Looks like he was sneaking around to see if anyone was racing that immortal. The answer is no. It's a full defense coming in. Immediately, 30k. They look to soak. Grab that level 7 early. Try and gain an advantage that way. Let's see what they can do. Rene comes out. Not going to land for now. Heh. <laughs> wrecked by a bot. You suck. Asu dives in, going to start focusing onto the Immortal, and with that Greymane, that should be enough, but the Immortal stun is good. Can they get out alive is now more important. The question is, can Diablo get out alive, actually? As Hasu able to disengage, roll away, they sustain through, and they're able to pick up the kill, pick up the Immortal, and that's a massively one fight, getting the bear two for 30k, a huge lead taken by them as they make their way up to the top lane. What a play! 30k! Grabbing themselves the lead here as they make their way in. Smashing their way through. Lots of damage being dealt to this immortal, holding themselves in it for now. Good stun onto Pitkid. Pitkid stays sustained though. Tanking their way through very effectively here. No hard aggression. Remember, Pit Kid is Justing. If you do, if you recognize that name, then you watch HGC. Very defensive points. We see the hammer on coming in for Fury. By the way, getting a little bit of extra immortal damage, giving his team some more race. Big stun onto Fund, who's onto 30 stacks right now. Will portal his way back to the rest of his team camp. Was taken by 30k during all the chaos. Wild Hearts able to disengage though. Don't get caught out. Almost full attack speed talents for Pit Kid, who still went Devil's Dew. Very interesting. It's weird to me how much people seem to not like the level one stun healing talent, despite we're on this map especially it being one of the most consistent. We see Liam currently hiding up in top lane to clear out these minion waves. Everyone else gonna rotate down to bot lane. For 30k, they've already finished the camp and will prevent any value being gained. Nicely done. Make their way in, 30k. Trying to posture to protect the camp, but they will be zoned away. They're a little bit scared of Pit Kid for good reason. Buttons creeping in. Weighted Pustule does land on Pit Kid. Not enough to finish the job. Single target or AoE from Sylvanas is going to be an interesting talent choice at level 10, but level 10 is hit, for, is hit faster by 30k. You see the massive shove. Odin go for the throat to try and make up for that uh, force of will. So it's like they go for a finisher as opposed to a starter that could be blocked. Undefender, no surprise. And Mosh Pit for the ETC. Finally, Wild Hearts pick up their level 10s as well. We do go AoE. Double silences, in fact. Try not to layer them. Wailing Arrow and Twilight Dream. They accidentally don't finish the camp. So they just have to walk someone onto it. Mafiarum will grab that. Waiting Arrow, Twilight Dream, Leyline Seal, Apocalypse, big wombo here with the Unleash the Balls. A little bit of extra setup potential there. They creep forward. Looks like Ty already starting on to this point. Hasu with the help. There's the ley line. We'll catch both assassins. Apocalypse will land onto Hasu. Hasu is the target here with Wailing Arrow already landed. They forced the engage, trying to get Fury. Can't do it. Unleash the Balls just gets the slow. Full engage, every heroic except for Twilight Dream was just used and they achieved zero kills. Odin was burnt in exchange, but that's the only heroic that was used by 30k. They now have a fantastic re-engage potential. Using the Odin even for race, everything getting value from them. This is not good for Wild Hearts, who will begin backing up. 30k looking to secure themselves a position in the top three.
by taking out the second seed. This would be a huge boost for them. Putting them at three and two, the exact same score as Wild Hearts. We see Diablo getting stunned out. Pitkin portal is available, forced to portal away as Twilight Dream was used to disengage. Funds makes it back into the air. Buds a little isolated here, but Hasu was too low. Great damage by Unaverted, who was able to split off to the side and get a good flank and drop Hasu too low to continue the fight. Pressure coming in. Fountain being grabbed by basically everyone. Portal, nicely done, being dropped to get Pitkin back in the fight. Counter race. The defense coming in for the members of 30k. As Wild Hearts look to move forward. Hasu zoned away by the bear. Liam onto the back line. Trying to cause pressure. Buds is going to be the one knocked asunder. Will they like seal? Going to be dropped. Wailing Arrow is up as is Apocalypse. Go for the one by round two. They get the CC of the 30k. But BBJ is the only one really affected. But he sustains through. Counter engage coming out from 30k once more. Who is still yet to use Mosh or go for the throat in these fights. They make their way forward. Undefender still being held onto as well. Disengage coming out from Wild Hearts. They realize they do not win this objective, so XP is the name of the game. Level 13 is closer for 30k and will be achieved during this push, most likely. So they have to soak up and grab it as fast as possible. So if they can soak up top lane, which is exactly what they've done, they might be in to take this fight and take the defense. Here comes the Immortal. Master's Touch, aka the Arcane Rift, was completed, by the way. So Medivh can now feed if he wants to. Massive shove. Going to take Misha all the way back to base. Slowing overkill. The lead rain coming in for Ty. Not going to be using it yet, though, because here comes the Odin. The Siege. Dropping in from 30k. Let's see what they can do. Good pressure. Mortal down to melee mode. Already cleans out the entire front gate, though. They begin to make their way forward onto the keep. Misha take it out very quickly. Immortal down to half health as it takes out the fountain. It's going to get a bit of damage onto the keeper. Can they go further? Massive, the lurking arm is used. Medivh, massive shove. Portal is not able to get out. The go for the throw picks up the kill as Buds is dropped low, forced to disengage. Undefender defender is burned. Keep is down. Two man mosh pit to take out Sylve. What a pickup. Coming in from 30k, and that might have just won them the game here, but the health bars are looking low. The spot timers are still low. 10 seconds until Medivh Apocalypse will land onto BBJ, but the CC from Liam to keep him alive. They turn it onto Pit Kid, a staggered death. Not enough gems for the revive. Bear is down. Do they keep going? Hasu, he hits the core, chooses to disengage. Everyone backs away. So we take a look at that fight one more time. The keep dropping low, but take a look at Funz here. Gets knocked back. The focus is good. Massive shove, grenade, and then go for the throat. All to interrupt him from making it into that portal. Timed perfectly. Everything used to stop Funz getting into that portal. Beautiful play by 30k. Leyland Seal. Apocalypse not available, so instead they drop the root. Massive shove. They try to get BBJ. The balls have been unleashed. They even chased down Ty, but BBJ is picked up. Twilight Dream not used. It's still 15 seconds out, so that was Wailing Arrow that was burned at the end there. Wow. What a play. What a kill. Zergling, by the way, going for a more aggressive style. A more aggressive style of Rexar. Going with a little bit of extra damage output as opposed to burst, it's more sustained. With Aspect of the Hawk, the extra attack damage to combine with the taking flight cooldown reduction on the Spirit Swoop means that every time you land the Spirit Swoop, you get a huge extra attack speed boost of 125. A massive DPS output for Rexar if he can stay sustained and stay alive. Immortal being started. Wild Hearts looking for their turnaround opportunity, but 16 was just achieved. Bot lane is kind of being pushed in pretty hard here. 
You can see 30k, they're trying to stop anyone making their way back. Here comes the Odin, fully extra unstoppable, but Tychus gonna get bodied here. Ty is taken out, completely isolated. Portal is used, bad spot for Hasu, who's in full retreat, gets sniped away. The Bruiser Cap about to make it to the core, there's still catapults there. That's still potential core damage. If we don't see Wild Hearts do anything about this, the shield is dropping low. The Siege Cap, Bruiser Cap has made it in, the Siege Cap has almost perished, but finally, we see Rexar make it back that will clear the catapults quick enough that it will not be a problem good clear out wild hearts will survive protect their core really making the most of the time that they had as they begin work they've got the halftime show they try to continue this race fury is back ty just respawning hasu five seconds out so currently no damage dealers for 30k the most they have is that percentage damage from the Arel. Tigers yet to pick that level 16 yet, by the way. Executioner for the Grey Mane. They take sustain. Armor piercing rounds for the Tychus as the Immortal is won by Wildheart. It'll push to the bot lane. The best lane for them. Possession being used onto the Catapult. That's a big deal here. Unaverted, giving his team a little bit of extra push. This Immortal, they clear the minion wave to bring the Catapult with them. They are really going to try and make a play with this. They don't want the fort. They want keeps. They need the counter pressure. With Sylvanas, with Black Arrows to disable the keep. They don't even do the disabling on the four. They have the Immortal. They're just going to tank through it and rush for the keep. If they can disable the keep, they can end and get a kill. They can end the game. This is the play for Wild Hearts. 30k, they stay in base. They know that their lose condition here is to get caught out in one boat. If they can defend this and siege from range using Ty with that, with that Odin, they can stay alive. There's the focus on Tahasu. He backs up. The balls come out. Big stun from Liam. Buys them time. Not a hard engage. They can't afford to get turned on. It's all about delay. Careful Hasu. He gets rolled into the root. The flip doesn't land him on the apocalypse. Twilight Dream catches Fury, though. Massive shove. Takes Diablo out of range. Both tags eliminated from the fight as the focus on the defender has to be dropped by Liam. They get a turnaround. Misha is taken out as they look for more. But the focus on Hasu is huge. The rollout, though. Disengage is insane. He gets away. Liam dropped so low. Snipes by averted. That's a two for one in these fights. Diablo respawned thanks to his death as they take the push forward. Two for zero, sorry. Diablo never actually died. He just got pushed out. Massive shove again. Trying to disengage him. Immortal down to half health. They go for the full race. Both damage dealers still alive. BBJ uses that villainy, uses that extra sustain, that extra damage output. But the Immortal is untouched. They cannot get close to it. And game number two goes over to Wild Hearts with an insane turnaround. Wild Heart Esports stepping up in that game number two, getting the turnaround, and they are able to bring the series to a 1-1. Beautiful performance here by Wild Hearts, allowing them to even up the score. You can see there, 30k though, they were in control for all of that game. All it took was that one objective, those double kills onto both the assassins to give uh, Wild Hearts enough momentum to smash their way through. Very impressive. Very impressive indeed. Nicely done. So, well played by Wild Hearts. You can see here again that Rexar build going for as much damage as possible for the actual race. Trying to just kill heroes. If you hit a hero with the Spirit Swoop, you get the race here. He also did go for a little bit more defensive as well with the opposing presence. Makes sense. You don't want to get burst down. We didn't see Pitkin, by the way. <coughs> Excuse me. Surviving the engage by being able to use that Shadow Charge on the reset that he got from his level 16 to disengage after not landing his Shadow Charge, his uh, Overpower, into the Apocalypse onto Hasu. So he was able to get out that way, and that's why he was hit by the Massive Shove, which pushed him out of the fight. Very interesting to see. Very fun. So... Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look. We're going to have a break on the mainstream, so we will talk about everything that is happening on the other side. So, as you can see here today, we are doing 30k versus Wild Hearts. It is currently 1 1 between the two teams. And after that, we will be doing Oxygen versus Granite Gaming. On the other side, it'll be Chili Mountain versus Sidestep Kings. That'll be tomorrow, and that will be followed by Simplicity versus Crowd Control. Those will be our teams and our matches for later.
Let's have a look at the current standings. You can see here that our matchups for today, 30k currently playing against Wild Hearts. Wild Hearts sitting at 3-1, 30k at 2-2. Two, two. And 30k, honestly, have looked more in control in both these games than Wild Hearts have. So Wild Heart, they might be in a little bit of trouble because if 30k can beat them here, 30k will also be in a 3-2, which will be the exact same score as Wild Heart Esports, who will also be the 3-2. If 30k were to win from here, so they won a 2-1, let's say, a 3-1, let's say, their final score would be 11 and 7. Now, this would put them ahead of Wild Hearts, as their score would be 11 and 8. So, in theory, in theory, 30k could overtake Wild Hearts here. And then it would all be up to crowd control to see if they could keep up tomorrow as well. But of course, they take on Simplicity. Simplicity could also, in theory, if they could beat out Crowd Control, Simplicity would also be in the 3-2 situation, and they would make their way up the board and overtake Crowd Control as well. No, they wouldn't. Sorry, they wouldn't overtake Crowd Control because they would be 11, They would be 10 and 8, even if they won 3-0. So Simplicity, outside of the Versus rule, which I think takes priority, I'm not 100% sure. Actually, no, I don't think it does. I don't think the versus rule does take effect here. I think it just goes map score first and then goes versus. So, we'll have to see who is able to emerge victorious. For now, though, 30k versus Wild Hearts is the match we are looking at. Can 30k snipe that currently would be second place position? Or will they be forced to fight back? Will they drop down to the two and three? Currently further down the board behind Simplicity, who could try and creep up ahead of them, try and get a quick snipe on those points here. Remember, those top three positions are the most highly sought after, as those are the positions that have an easier time in the playoffs. That is where you can gain a big advantage here. We will have to see. The other match, Auction Esports versus Granite. Auction Esports can be very expected to emerge victorious here. But again, new patch, new day. Playing around those medallions might be the difference we need here for Granite Gaming to start making those high, those high point plays and make their way up the board. We will have to see. If they can do that, they will become 2 and 3 as well. Not ideal. They'd still be potentially behind Simplicity or 30k, depending on how those scores go. But it would be a big boost to try and separate themselves from Sidestep Kings and separate themselves from Chili Mountain. Although, celebrating the, separating themselves from Chili Mountain, not a huge deal here. We will see how that goes. So, should be a fun matchup. We're currently 1-1 in this series. If you are enjoying today's series, ladies and gentlemen, I am your alternative caster, Tetcher. Not being paid by anyone this week, as we do not have sponsors. So today, the shout-out for my sponsors are you lovely people who are able to give donations, subs via bits of... Uh, donations and subs via bits, via donations in Streamlabs, via buying merch or buying stuff from my humble affiliate links, or by becoming a member on YouTube. Check out that join button below the stream, if you, below the YouTube video if you're looking at that, or that subscribe button if you're looking below this stream. This is the only way I can keep casting these games is if I can continue making enough money to afford food. As you can see, I don't need a huge amount more food because I am trying to lose weight because I've gained some. So I need a huge amount of food, but I do need to be able to afford to live and afford rent and food, etc. So every little bit is a huge help. And of course, be like Horfoja here and become a follower so that you can see exactly when I go live and catch all the CCL action as it happens. So. We have our first two games while we wait for the mainstream to get back from their tea break. Let's talk about different players here from these two teams. Let's talk about 30k first, where let's talk about their team captain, Hasselwops. Hasselwops has been an insane player through a massive history of games, starting on 2014 with his team Well Met, a very much more German-focused team where he was playing with players like Soccer, another StarCrafter, another StarCraft ex uh, experienced player, and Nomi back in the day. There's also some very interesting names you might recognize, like Gertenherd, Shadowmare, and Sportbilly, 
were also on that team before that team was eventually picked up by Rockat. He then played on Mind Sanity, that legendary EU roster that performed that just didn't make it to the to BlizzCon, I believe, and Misfits who performed beautifully and were one of the top performing EU teams for a while before eventually ending up on Team Liquid, where he stayed until the end of the HGC, performing insane. The best performances they had, Dreamhack Tours, an event I was at, absolutely fun event, where they were able to achieve first, beating out the at-time team Fnatic. They've also, after that though, they never scored uh, more than second. They uh, positioned third in the EU Pro Play in phase one during 2017, where they lost to Team Dignitas in the end. They scored sixth in 2017 phase two, where they lost to Wish. That was a fun team when that was around. Fifth in Europe phase one, 2018, where they lost to Zealots. And finally, they stepped themselves up the board and finished second in the EU Pro League and made their way to BlizzCon, where they finished third and fourth after losing in a 3-2 to Gen G. This was the BlizzCon I was at, and that was an intense matchup. Team Liquid gave it everything they could, really performed well, but they were unable to emerge victorious in the end, losing in the semi-finals to Gen G, who of course went on to win the damn thing. Very good. Team Liquid beating out Heroes Hearth along the way in the first round of play. Hazorbs, though, after the BlizzCon and after HGC collapsed, he did not finish. He was able to perform an insane for an insane continuation of his career. He is still, of course, under contract, I believe, with Team Liquid to continue streaming and doing stuff for them, which is really good for him. But he also kept going with his career in the post-HGC era, where he played on his, his own self-made team, Washed Up, where if you look at their results from 2019 onwards, it's gold. It's very gold. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to quickly count the amount of tournaments that Washed Up won, just quickly. As we do jump into the draft, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get that started for you. He hasn't missed a tournament since HGC died. That is true. So here we go. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine. Uh, hang on. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three first places since HGC has died. We can actually count. Uh, yeah, 23 first places and a uh, plethora, about 9 to 10 second places and a few thirds sprinkled in there. Hasu has pretty much undoubtedly been the most successful player since HGC has ended. Andy won count on sub A round cup. Let's make that 28. As we do see the the Uther band out again, as is Leoric. Wildheart, they are not as willing as, uh, they are not as willing as 30k is to let that Medivh through, and they will ban that away. We'll see how they do. Let's start off with the Chromie ban. I'm going to be seeing that Chromie banned out once more, so 30k. Junkrat is available for them. This is one of this is a Hasu special. We'll see if that makes it onto the board. Could give them a big little boost here. As Liam gonna be coming in with that diva first pick. Very nice to see. So, Wildheart Esports now. What are we going to see from their first two picks? Cassius left open. They don't care, though. Immediate Deathwing. Currently being hovered by Zergling. They're off later. And Funs taking that Tychus away from Hasu. Has been leaning very heavily on that. Deathwing, also a hero, does pretty well versus Junkrat. This is cool. We might have to see the Cassia coming in from 30k because it's another percentage damage hero. Althael for Ty. 
Now this could obviously be, that is interesting. So double frontline here. Gifted sub, an anonymous gifter. Thank you for gifting to uh, anonymous cheerer. Sorry, hang on, wait, I'm confused. An anonymous cheerer, an anonymous gifter. What happened here? There we go. An anonymous gifter giving a tier one sub to Greffen. Thank you very much. Very appreciated for gifting that sub. I don't know why it also says an anonymous cheerer, but here we go. <coughs> so. We're going to be seeing the Ana band away here. And of course, Nano Boost Malthale would 100% turn Malthale into that assassin style they're looking for. Because, of course, this will be one of their damage dealers because Liam is stuck on that offlane. <coughs> Rexar going to be coming in here as the second bat. Very sensible. Zerkling could, of course, swap that Deathwing onto someone else. And could pick up a Rexar. Would make it very difficult for D.Va. And, of course, Rexar is still very strong on the objective. It's a smart little ban away here. So now then, Wild Hearts. Yorel and Stukov coming in here. That's quite strong. The Yorel especially... Gonna be causing a lot of disruption for that diva and that stuck off. They can massive shove mouth ale. They might have a chance. Of course, this will probably be a last rights mouth ale. So it's not gonna be as effective as if you were able to massive shove, say, a tormented excuse me, a tormented souls mouth ale. BBJ and Hasu now with the final picks. We're gonna be seeing that Cassia coming in. That might mean we see Cassia on tie. And Hasu on Malthael? I think it's more likely we'll see Ty on Malthael because it seems more of a hyper carry hero for him. We will have to see. We see Deckard as well. Cassia is Hasu. Yeah, I thought it might be. We could have seen a swap, but I think Ty is definitely more naturally suited to the Malthael. Now, Wild Hearts. Final pickup. Hasu doesn't play Mouth. Thank you very much for the info. Zool. Final pickup here. That is a main tank Zool. With ranged assassin Deathwing. Of course, it was swapped off Zergling, as we predicted. And Zergling taking off that Urel. And Pit Kid. Bringing out the Zool main tank. We'll see if that can carry them to victory. So we're going to be getting ready to jump into game number three. Of course, it's currently, the score is currently 1 1. So no matter what, both of these teams need two victories to emerge victorious. Let's see if which one can begin to claim a lead as we prepare to head into game number three. Reminder, if you are enjoying, we'll be having a lovely time with today's games and tomorrow's games. So make sure you tune in for those and have a good time. Who is playing tonight, CM Burt? Let me show you. Tonight shall be 30k versus Wildheart Esports. Currently 1-1 in between those teams. And Oxygen Esports are playing against Granite Gaming. If you tune back in tomorrow, you will see Chili Mountain versus Sidestep Kings. And if you tune in for the actual game, you'll see Simplicity versus Crowd Control. I am, I'm giving them too much shit. Chili Mountain have changed their roster. We'll see how that works out for them. Should be very entertaining to see how their roster changes make the difference. As we head in to game number three of this best of five. Let's get this started. Nearly sent my phone yeeting to the floor there. But it did survive. Wildheart Esports bringing out that main tank, Zool. Old-fashioned classic here. Even going for the extra slowing Zool shield to get that cooldown reduction on the extra bone armor. This will help Zool stay sustained. You can, of course, also go for the backlash, but in this case, surviving Mouth Ale is way more important for Pitkid. So going for that Shackler, Getting the cooldown reduction on his bone armor is going to be a big deal. And then he'll, of course, go for a full Grim Scythe build. No surprise on the quarterback for Tychus. Extra range, extra sustain. Having that wave clear is the exact reason that Greymane got nerfed in previous... Uh, a couple of years ago. Having that insane wave clear on a ranged assassin who could also do great percentage damage is exactly why Greymane got nerfed. And now Tychus can do that exact same thing. This is why we are seeing the very big rise of Tychus. Sounds good. So, full metal for the Diva and a Lightning Fury coming in for the Cassia because why not? Good job with the Iron Skin there by Fury preventing the damage. But Lightning Fury, because there's a big old Deathwing body to hit, so might as well just keep yeeting shots at it. Just 
Buds and Unaverted taking out the Siege Camp on their own. We're seeing D.Va grabbing the one for 30. Kaylee and grabbing that solo. Finally, we'll see the rotation up. There's the first bud. Very easy kill onto Ty, picking him up very easily to the point where I didn't actually see it. I blinked and looked at my drink to see if I could fit a drink in and realized that uh, someone died. By the way, interesting talents to be picked up here. Deckard field study, implying that this might be a ruby build, allowing Malthael to dive a little bit more aggressively. Let's see if that is the way we go. Or maybe just burst damage emerald. Ruby has been nerfed, but it's still strong. There it is. Ruby is on the board for Deckard. We're going for the burst build, baby. Damage build Deckard. No auto attack sustain coming in from Buds this time with the biotic armor. Instead, going with the, with the extra spread, the one good spread. And of course, we already mentioned Grimscythe build for Pit Kid, already taking his first talent in there. Tychus in the rhythm, unaverted. Give him a little bit of extra damage. Burst sustain from Hasu on that Cassia with the inner light. And Liam picks up his team's Bruiser Camp. Doesn't delay it, just picks that up quite quickly. And of course, no surprise here. Range damage build for funds. We saw a couple people try to innovate with this and change how that build's supposed to be played, and it didn't work. So people are going back to the old fashioned build. Die alone for Ty. Big power spike, especially against funds. Hasu. Hovering around, clearing minions. Gonna be looking for stacks. Already at 14. Doing a fantastic job here. Level 7 hit a little bit earlier for Wildheart here. But we still see 30k. They still try and hold the point here. Fury makes his way on. They're going to try and fight. Down seven. Hasu even coming in from the side. Tries to bend onto Zergling. Not able to do so. Fury. Iron skins up. 24 to 23 in favor of Wildheart. They're still sieging forward. But Diva trying to push forward. 29 to 28. This is actually quite close. Level 7 still not here for 30k. Wildheart's trying to creep forward. Trying to make the most of that advantage. Self-destruct being burned. That's actually going to grab them quite a lot. Will it be enough? It is not. Wildheart, despite the self-destruct, able to achieve the channel. And 30k. Trying to race it with that D.Va. Just short. It was 37 to 31 at the end. Wildheart Esports able to take the first Punisher of the game. They four-man push mid. Leaving Zergling to clear out the top lane. See what they can do. Anti-heals coming out for Malthael. Big damage onto Liam on that D.Va, but he will survive. They're going to be able to burn through the remainder of that Punisher. The Frost Punisher for will be disabled, but no more push coming in from them as Wildheart. And as such, there's a disengage coming out. Over half the fort health lost here. It's quite a big push from Wildheart. Good value this time. And they're going to try and use the rest by looks of it to maybe gank Malthael. Positioning is set. Siege camp being taken by the members of of the members of 30k. Ty, he's got on a pale horse here, playing a bit further back. Let's see what they can do. They try to make their way forward. Looks like they're just going to siege onto Ty. Takes a lot of damage. But they didn't have enough to finish the job. Liam's going to come and take over from Ty. Allow Ty to freaking leave. Doesn't want, does not want to be up there alone. Makes his way back down to the rest of the team. Grab the fountain on the way. Fury cleans out. The minion wave, giving his team a little bit of extra vision as to their wave pushes up as they can start this siege camp. In the meantime, Wild Hearts grab their own siege camp on the safe side of the map. 30k able to grab this safe enough that they are not ganked. Small advantages gained as they will have to clear out mid lane. As currently, Zul is trying to make this very difficult, trying to push it up early as level 10 is achieved Touch earlier for Wild Hearts. They grab that Poison Nova, Bellowing Roar, Big Red Button, and Flailing Swipe this time for the Disengage. No massive shove. Going for the full team Disengage. Stay one, listen. Micro Missiles. Probably a Ball Lightning and a... Nope, it's a Valkyrie. 
And now I don't want to say this, but I should say it's probably a last right. Yep, got that one right. Fun's going to have to Cataclysm out as he takes a bit of damage. Periton Hearts, thank you very much for the sub. Very appreciated. Hope you enjoy your time here. If you're enjoying the series, ladies and gentlemen, please consider dropping a sub. We are now just short of 100 subs. We are up to 83 now. So close to that 100 sub count. Thank you all for the support. I believe we can make that before Christmas. Liam cleans out the minions. Just buying time, playing very safe. Liam, very good at playing a safe diva here. If you are, if Beowulf is still in the chat, if you ask him, you can tell me, he can tell you that I do not play that safe at all. Fury able to play around there to avoid taking too much damage from funds. He's gonna begin working and clearing out their own bruiser camp. Reaction mirrored by Wildheart. a slower game before the objective. No one wanting to overextend. And thank you, Peritid. Very appreciated. Very appreciated indeed. Slap that! Slap that Impaler. No Impaler, it's a Polish Shaman. Wrong one. Wrong count. Lots of breath. A little bit of damage. Fury. Trying to just be enough of a distraction. Trying to bully funds a bit. You can see a couple stacks just gain there. They try to grenade it back into the Molten Breath. Zergling from the side, able to get a lot of damage onto Fury there. And even gets out without taking too much damage. Side head start for 30k, but Wild Hearts begin to step up onto the point. No team at level 13 yet, but we do see the split stock from Zergling trying to get them that 13. 30k, commit to the objective. Wild Hearts commit to the level. Valkyrie lands big onto the back line. But Zul tanking through, drops the poison Nova, but last right. Finishes the job. And that's a great route onto Fury, though, who is still trying to retreat. Buzz trying to set it up. The grenade is good, but the potion on the objective grabbed by Fury running through the shrine minions just to get that burst healing to stay alive. As we will see the fight secured by 30k. They hold the line here. 30 just around the corner for the sides of Wild Hunt Esports as Ty has made his way mid to try and match it. But here comes the invade of Wild Hunt trying to make the play forward with that 13 advantage just hit. Bellowing Roar is good. Down goes the t down goes Hasu as 30k are being very split here. BBJ drop low will get the fountain and make their way back in. Ty. And Fury, though, they're tanking through Iron Skin. The sustained Liam on the back line. Ty is dropping quite low, though. His healing is out. One Shrine Minion left, though. That will be acquired by 30k, but they lose two for one in terms of kills. And the Punisher is going to be defended in front of the wall for exactly that reason. Funs, of course, the one to take it because he is permanently unstoppable. Clear their way through. Liam. A little bit of CC, but he's just trying to race the tower right now. They're trying to bait in Zergling. Race comes out. Bless shield. Condemn. Valkyrie. But on a defender, he don't care. Liam is going to lose the mech. There's a stay a while, but it's interrupted. Funs with the Earthbreaker. Able to keep that alive. Hasu rooted down by Pitkin, who moves in. Big burst with the poison over at the Cataclysm. But Hasu, the rubies, they keep him alive. Hasu is tanking. We saw Liam take it out. It's going to be the death. Zergling exchanged for Hasu there, not Liam. The Cal, the, as we call it on this stream, the Kaldor Peacekeeper from Yorel. Not enough to save the life. Of Yorel herself. Fury dodging the stun. Wildheart's taking the momentum there. They cleaned out. They defended top. And now they're just going to grab the first fort of the game. Molten Breath to zone out as unaverted with this Odin will be able to finish the job. Even sieging the heroes. Fury takes quite a lot of damage. Missiles coming in. Unverted backs up. Lots of good damage coming in from that Deathwing. They're looking solid so far. Putting on quite the performance. We are seeing Wild Hearts gaining a lot more momentum. It's the first early game that they've actually come close to winning. And as such, Wild Hearts are trying to hold on to that momentum. 
Last right, though, are two stacks. That cooldown reduction is going to get worse and worse. The game goes on, giving Wild Hearts more and more problems. Valkyrie. Just short of landing onto Zergling, who is once again being ganked. Last right dropped way too early. That's such Zergling, able to sustain through and disengage. But as you can see, last right's already down to 50 seconds cooldown. Always nice route from Pit Kid. Inevitable end. Burned by Ty. Keeps himself alive. Avoiding the roots here. Bot lane. Getting rushed down quickly by Unaverted and Buds. They will back away. Fury was looking for him. Unable to find it. A couple of Ruby Potions dropped. Not too much. Molten Breath. To try and race. They have conflagration now. Much harder. 430k to step up. In the river melts Fury, by the way. He's gone for Sizzle attacks too. That's all about those. Even, by the way, even into a double blind of Cassia and Johanna. I don't doesn't care. Sizzle attacks plus in the rhythm. He tries to outlast the blind and get the percentage damage. Good stun by Funds. Setting themselves up for the rotation. They're going to arrive at the objective a little bit early. Talents are even, though. Let's see what they can do. They now have Diverting Power Scroll of Stone Curse. It's going to do them a lot of good. That Diverting Power doing really good against Funds. That's the idea here. Every time Funds drops that Molten Breath, Liam is going to drop that Defense Matrix. It's on cooldown this time, though, and he's caught in the Rook. Configuration drops him real low. Here comes the Self-Destruct. Might as well. Mech was dropped pretty hard here. That was good. Trying to capitalize on the virulent reaction to try and pick up the kill. BBJ in the back line. Trying to stay alive. There comes the Poison Nova to keep him alive. But BBJ is dropped out. And the Bellowing Roar catches Cassia too. Hasu is gone. Liam is out. Tai is completely isolated. He's going to try and port back to base to escape. Liam should escape. But that is a 2 for 0 in favor of Wild Hearts. Easily able to take that fight let's have a quick look at that again the main part of that fight the cataclysm very strong for the setup tie tries to escape but the sleep the stay a while and the huge damage the bellowing roar catching both of them completely isolated with funds basically body blocking the escape to set up for the rest of his team there very nicely executed as the push continues Surfing, staying safe. Liam popped out of the mech. They tried to knock him back into the Bolt of Breath, but Liam able to escape. He's dropped very low, though. He is not healthy. Ancient Blessings was just used by Decker, trying to keep the team alive. Fury dropping low. Not in the best situation here. Has to drop the Iron Skin to get away. The Immortal, the Punisher, sorry, pushing into the fort. BBJ, not healthy. There's a couple of rubies in this backline, but they are struggling. BBJ. Zoned away, but he pulls the Punisher all the way to the keep. That's a big play for them to keep them alive. Valkyrie comes in, pulls in Pitkin. They're going to try and take him out. Stay a while. Gets most of the back line, but they can't touch funds. Punisher finally goes down on the core, taking out a couple percentages. As Liam continues to try and clear the wave. Down goes Ty with the man advantage. The trigger is pulled. We see Wild Hearts trying to make their play onto the core. Liam in the back line. Trying to cause some grief. Drops the self-destructor by time. It catches only Zergling. The core down to 49%. We see Pickin holding back the entire team alone. Zergling with a big stun. That's the setup they need. And this is going to be BBJ and Liam left to defend. And they do not have the damage. That is going to be game number three in favor of Wild Heart Esports. Slap it, buds. There we go. Wildheart able to take game number three and 30k. Who looked so strong in game number one and two. Not going to be happy about that. But they still have the opportunity to bring this back into their favor. Hasu. Topping the damage out for his team. But look at the difference between him and Deathwing. 53 thousand the aoe damage was mental doing so much work unaverted 39k still more than everyone on the side of 30k in fact zul tychus and deathwing and yorel everyone except for the support buds all scored more than the highest hero damage output 
on 30k. That shows how much control they had over those fights. The damage output was too strong. Deck had really tried to make up for it with that Ruby. Very smart play. But the healing output was just nowhere near close to enough. And that's the issue we see with heroes like Deckard when you're trying to deal with players that just get insane DPS output. We're like the Lunaras, like that Zul plus Deathwing with that Poison Nova. They just couldn't deal with the amount of damage being put out in the amount of directions that they were being put out. And as such, the fight was won and the game was won by a better outdraft there by Wildheart Esports, able to take a much stronger fight. Very impressive. Well played there at the end. He really did try, did a uh, Deckard. I might have preferred maybe to see the AoE healing potions, honestly. The AoE healing potions might have actually helped them with a lot of those fights, but in that case, it just did not work out in the end at all. They just got focused down way too hard. There was very little they could do about that. That was just so much damage output at one time. The team got very split. They just did not have the way to deal with that Deathwing either. Was Brightwing banned? I don't remember. That was a little bit ago. Anyone remember? Anyone in chat remember that for me? That would be very helpful. But match point now, now achieved by Wild Hearts. Let's see if they can close this out. Or if 30k can bring us to a game number five. As we are going to be preparing for our fifth game, our fourth game of the day. Reminded that we still have another series coming up after this where we will have Oxygen versus Granite Gaming. Was Brightwing banned, Unity? That is what we are trying to remember. <coughs> Excuse me. Auction versus Granite Gaming will be coming up after this. See the number one team in the CCL. Playing against the up-and-comers of the Europeans, Granite Gaming. And of course, make sure you tune back in tomorrow where we will have Chili Mountain with their new and imp with their new roster with the even more Swedes. Therefore, it must be better as they picked up Gia and Galna Gunnar, a very strong team. Galna, if you're in my chat today, I'm going to miss having you in my chat because it was always fun. And of course, we will have Simplicity versus Crowd Control to close out tomorrow's games. Those are unmissable games. You gotta see the new Chili Mountain. We have to see if the new Chili Mountain can gain a point. They are 0 and 12. Is more Swede better? We will have to see. Will more Swedes mean more wins? This is how we tell Chili Mountain against Simplicity. Simplicity, they're not a top team. They are number five right now. Simplicity. They are going to be expected to try and make their way up the board if they become the first team to lose to Chili Mountain. Even though it's a new roster, it's going to feel bad. Knowing that Chili Mountain performed so poorly in the previous series, they got a little better. But knowing that they were unable to maintain victory. And then Simplicity are the ones to lose them. They're going to be feeling bad that that trade happened in their week. We'll have to see how it goes. <coughs> Sidestep Kings, they have a nice little play as well. Sorry, it's Sidestep Kings who have to play. It's Sidestep Kings, sorry, who have to play against, against Chili Mountain. So if Sidestep Kings lose to this new and improved Chili Mountain, then all of that scaling talk that we've been talking about for Sidestep Kings is going to be kind of out the window because they are just going to be relying on playoffs at that point because they need this win. Sidestep Kings, they've come so close in every match they have played to achieving victory, and yet... Here they are in seventh place. There's only so many times you can come close before you have to say that this team isn't winning games. They beat Simplicity. That is their one win on the board. They lost to Crowd Control. Not too surprising there. They lost to Oxygen. Not too surprising there. In an amazing 3-2 series. Definitely worth a watch. But they also lost to Granite, another quite low-ranked team. So sidestep Kings. Let's see what they can do. In week two, they scored. Th they went 0-3. In week three, they went 3-1. They went, uh, sorry, 1-3. In week four, they went 2-3. In theory, that means they should go 3-2 if the uh, transitive property is correct. You fought CC, Crowd Control, 30k second. Or they thought, they, oh, you thought that's where they were supposed to be. That was a lot, what a lot of people expected. 30k. Because uh, Crowd Control and 30k, they came second place in the Icebreaker Tournament. 
That was expected, yeah. And yeah, a lot of people expected Sidestep Kings to be top of the board as well. And that did not happen. They have yet to synergize correctly, but they have been growing. They have been getting better every time. And they are the team that have taken Oxygen Esports, along with Wild Heart Esports, to the best matchup. Oxygen Esports, in their series to date, they went 3-0, 3-1, 3-1, and 3-2. The only team to take two maps off of them, the only one to date, is Sidestep Kings. It shows how much Sidestep Kings have been growing. Auctioning Sports, they have to see if they have to make sure that they don't lose their undefeated streak in the next series against uh, Granite Gaming here. The Sidestep Kings, their, starting, their start was not as good. They did get punished. They did lose the start. We'll have to see how well they ha their scaling has been going. I predicted from the start that they are scaling, and I think they will come in top three when playoffs come around. That is my prediction. I've said it for I've said it for a while. <coughs> have to see if it's true. See if my prediction is correct. I am pretty good at predicting usually. Not to okay. Yes, to toot my own horn. Toot my own horn quite a bit. See what they can do. For now. We're just waiting for game number four to begin. Is the mainstream on break or something? Is that what's happening here? Hang on, I'm checking the mainstream. Nope, they just did draft. They just haven't dragged us into the draft yet. How irritating. We'll get it sorted, don't worry. We'll get we'll get you in the draft. It looks like it's just started, so it looks like there was just a delay. So we should be good to jump into that draft very shortly, and we'll be able to get underway with game number four. In the meantime, while we wait for that to swap over for our side, if you are enjoying, ladies and gentlemen, this stream today, then maybe consider dropping a subscription or gifting a subscription to someone else. If you're feeling generous, it is the season of giving. Or, perhaps, if you're feeling generous, perhaps you could give a little bit of a donation via the Streamlabs link below, or via Bits. Both would be very appreciated. And, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, if you look below, if you look at the description in the stream, you will, uh, in the video, sorry, you will see that there is a donation link to that Streamlabs I just mentioned. If you want to support me, it is very appreciated. And anything that happens off stream will be shouted, shouted out on stream, so check the next video. And we see on the other side... Uh, sorry, and of course, if you look uh, above the description, you will see a join button where you can support my YouTube videos that way, which di directly, of course, supports the stream too. It's a great way to support me. There are multiple options there where you can support for a cheaper price than on Twitch. With Z to Hots, that is appreciated. That is an opinion, but that is an opinion, though. Everyone has different tastes, but it is appreciated. Hey, they finally got us into the draft. Let's go, finally. Alrighty, let's get this going as we head in. 30k on the left, Wild Heart on the right. Uther. And the Deathwing have been banned away. Mediv and Chromie taken out. The Chromie is still a very strong pick for 30k, so it's a safe ban no matter what. <coughs> Excuse me. Now then, 30k. Hey, they're starting off with the Rexar. That is fun. Now, we heard last week that Liam does not play the Rexar, meaning that this might be kept on Hasu. However, a week has passed since then. There could have been a lot of time that Liam might have spent practicing on the Rexar. So the option is always there to swap it. Very sneaky to see. Let's see that flexibility. Stukov and Cassia. Going to be coming in early for Wild Heart Esports. Very strong opener. Cassia is still one of the best assassins in the game right now. We can actually have a look at total CCL stats and look at the win rate for different heroes. <coughs> and right now, Cassia, she is sitting a little bit lower in terms of the win rates because of the fact that she is picked by so many players here. As Yorel and Lee Ming are going to be coming in here. Where is Cassia? I think I just scrolled past her on my statistics page. Where is she? Okay, control F it is. 
There we go. Cassia currently has a 59% win rate across a very high amount of games. Cassia currently has been played in 44 games of CCL as Garrosh shall be removed. Makes sense. Cassia is a little bit of a closer ranged assassin until level 16. So fun to see. Do they think this is Dragonshire or something? No, they picked Rexar because they are running Rexar as a ranged assassin. It gives them a lot of control. A lot of control. A big chunk of extra CC on a ranged assassin in the form of Hasu here. And it gives them a lot of sustain. Allows them to hold the point without actually having to risk anything. Diva is open. I would not be surprised to see that from Wild Hearts. Despite the fact that Diva does struggle into Rexar, it should still be very strong for the actual objective. Is that what we see from Wild Hearts, though? Let's see. So far, by the way, fun fact, the Deathwing team has won both games. Very fun fact there. Leoric! We don't see D.Va. We go for that Leoric, and there's the Thrall. Now, look at who's playing what here. This could, of course, be swapped at any point. But right now, Leoric is being played by the offlaner Zergling. And the, the tank player, most of the time, the tank player, Pitkid, is playing the Thrall. Now, that opens up a little bit of flexibility here. Could be some great confusion coming in. Of course, we do know that Wild Hearts are one of the most flexible teams. So, it's not too surprising. Anduin, great way to disengage from anyone caught in that Entomb. And the Imperious for their main tank role. They love this Imperious Rexar combo as the main setup. And then having whoever they want in the off lane usually works pretty well. Very strong. I do agree that I think it's a very it's likely that Justin, AK Pickett, will Leo, but it looks like we are incorrect. This will be a pick kid ETC. And we will see Zergling taking that Leoric. The flexibility that they have. Very interesting. Always fun. That is what is so scary about Wild Hearts, because 30k, they're going to have been thinking the same thing as us. But Wild Hearts, they have that flexibility. They have that surprise factor. Now they have some disengage. So, and that is going to be a good way to help them deal with that. Uh, a great way to help them deal with the hard engage and the triple front line that is available for the members of 30k. Should be interesting. Should be fun. So... Let's get this ready. It will not be to see offlane. It will be Leoric because Funs is the f uh, Funs is the bruiser for the team. He's playing the thrall, and Pitkin is the main tank. So I doubt we will see the offlane, but they might still go stage dive for split soak in the late game. We will have to see. We have the game started up. Reminder, everyone, we are at 83 subs. We're trying to get to 100 before Christmas. So if you're enjoying the show, make sure to show your support by dropping one. As we see on the left, it is going to be 30k. With Imperius, Li Ming, the Anduin, Rexar, and Yarel. And on the right, Wildheart Esports. They're bringing out the ETC, the Stukov, the Leoric, the Cassia, and the Thrall. Let's see what they can do at this stage. So we get this going. Also, if you are watching on Twitch or YouTube, I have set up channel memberships on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Tetra, and I have yet to receive any memberships. If you want to be the first member and help decide what kind of content I make in the future, as we will see Leo take it out early. Big first blood from 30k. Nice little bit of burst to set that up for the kill. But members have a big say in what content I make on the channel, so if you want to be my first member, that is open to you. As we do see, the mid wave going to be cleaned out. Zergling is back, luckily. Very slow respawn times. Yorel ran the entire conveyor belt, by the way, as that is an attempt at a kill onto Funs too. But Funs stayed alive. The bear was slain. Half a kill going over to Wild Hearts, but 30k. They've shown their style here. They use Imperius for the engage. The bear is the follow-up, and then they let Ty follow up the burst. They've loved the Lee Ming with this. They've run this exact same style a couple times in the past, and so far, it is undefeated. As 30k try to push forward. They try to set themselves up to get more. Let's see what they can do with this. But yeah, so far, this particular strat from 30k has caused big problems. They showed it first against, against Chili Mountain. 
now they have to deal with it. Sorry, they showed it versus simplicity. <coughs> Where they ran a blaze usually at the offlane. They ran it on towers and Falskaya, this map as well. And again, this comp is so far undefeated from 30k. Let's see if Wild Hearts can be the first ones to change that. And freedom, charge strikes, and charge shots. Cassia level one, and Li Ming level four. Funs dodging the full engage here. Missed his route, so he's unable to follow up onto Fury. He's looking for that percentage damage. In a light, despite not going for a full Lightning Fury build coming in from Cassia, still wants that little bit of burst sustain. And hey, Thrall making the most of buffed talents. Going to be picking up a little bit of physical armor with his level 4. He's, of course, got buffed from 50 to 75 now with that Feral Resilience. Three stacks of Frostwolf Resilience, for starters. Great boost in quick healing. And two stacks of Feral Resilience. Get our Feral Resilience. Getting 75 armor against the next hero. Basic attacks. Very sensible. Lots of little burst from hard engages. So an excellent point. There was no Stukov in the sign of Stukov was essential in the build. In fact, the build was the exact same both games from 30k. Stukov, Imperius, Blaze, Li Ming, and Rexar. This time, no Stukov. It's stolen away from them. They're relying on the Anduin route instead as their follow-up. We'll see how that goes. Very sensible indeed. We'll see if that's enough. Calamity for Li Ming. No surprise there. And a win self-heal again. BBJ plays a little bit safer than everyone else. The virulent reaction is almost always picked. Yes. There's the, the Celestial Charge. Easy kill. Goodbye, ETC. Pick it. Taken out. Fury, who, by the way, did not go cooldown reduction on his stun. He went for the Varalus for the Burn the Impure. The ability to burst through these frontliners. It doesn't matter who he engages on. He wants them to die. That is the play here. We'll see Rexar going with a bit of a burst damage as well with the Dire Claws on level 13. And that's the strat. They basically just go for maximum burst to kill one person every single time. And no matter what, Li Ming should get a reset out of this. The idea is, if Lehman gets the reset, then no one will try and re-engage them. And if they do, they should just be able to do it again. They don't have the cooldown reduction to keep a long period fight, but they don't want that. Once they have those resets, they're in a pretty good spot to just win a 4v5. So. They begin to push their way forward. Going into bot lane, by the way, not the usual strategy with this protector. Normally, you would see it go top lane to try and snipe the fountain like they're trying to do down here. This may be a long play. 30k not looking to gain a long game here. Instead, they want to try and end it by third protector. This might mean that they're just trying to set up bot lane so that they can just try and push for a keep by objective number three. It's a risky play because it implies that you are risking losing second objective, but it is doable. That might be what we're seeing from 30k here, as Wild Hearts do find themselves on the back foot. Three kills to a half a kill, as they did kill Misha earlier on. As so this is Wrath for Thrall, a little bit of extra burst there, as we do see the support camp and the healing camp gonna be coming in, the fortification camp and the support camp being taken by 30k. A little bit of a slow start, though. They do need a damage dealer here. Hass is doing the best he can, but Rexar, not the highest DPS yet. Gonna grab that. That's Gamita. Gonna go on to Fury. Zergling playing real far back. He's gonna head down to bot lane because he's not looking to fight the off lane. Oh, sorry, he's not looking to fight the full team. He's looking to fight the off lane. Oh, he's going for the wraparound play, actually. He is here. They have level 10 in Tomb. Flailing Swipe, Ball Lightning, Earthquake. Earthquake plus Ball Lightning. Great combo. Really helps them set up. And ETC. This really should be a mosh pit. But there is a wave of force and a light bomb. It's going to be difficult to land. But I think the zoning pressure is kind of needed here. We'll have to see. The kid will hold for now. He could still go stage dive and still probably get some reasonable value out of it. Especially onto heroes like Rexar and Li Ming, but second that... Oh, good. Dodge by Funs there. 
the second that Fain Death comes in, then Rexar's basically immune to that hard engage, and Li Ming is so mobile it shouldn't matter. Yeah, I think this kind of has to be Mosh Pit, but I think he might pick Stage Dive. We will see. Funs holding position. Bear looking to interrupt. Hasu being very annoying with this. Hasu having no trouble microing both the bear and himself. Of course, he is an ex-StarCraft professional, positioning very high in StarCraft tournaments throughout the world. Going to make his way down to the middle lane. And they did pick Moshbeer. Hooray. I'm actually glad. Don't know if they'll ever land it, but I think it is important to have in this game. Such a charge lands. They don't land the follow-up stun, though. Looking up was dropped. There's the Earthquake. They focus the bear. That's all they're going to get. But Hasu caught in the entomb. Where's BBJ? Light bomb for the turnaround. They already used the Leap of Faith, so they weren't able to pull Hasu out of there. No one dies except for the bear. But the bear is still a big chunk of XP. Focus. Marsh Pit onto Yorel. If they can interrupt it, they can maybe get Yorel out. But they don't have anything left. They burned Wave. They burned everything. All their CC used. The Mosh Pit used on one person. And that is the first kill that Wild Hearts will be able to get. If they take out Yorel with the one-man Mosh Pit. Nicely done. And yeah, the block party here is to try and help deal with that flash of anger. Helps against Rexar as well. Helps block a lot of damage output. Same with the Feral Resilience for that thrall. Leaming also charged attacks. Does do spell damage, but it will still block some extra damage. Fortification camp burned again. Turrets being acquired by both teams. Both teams could have two turrets by the looks of it for this objective. Gloves of Alacrity now for Cassia. That will keep her a lot safer here. No Encore. Makes sense, I guess. That zoning, that uh, peeling potential available for EDC is a bit too important here with the cooldown reduction. I think I would have preferred Encore, but I definitely understand why they went for the Pinball Wizard. Healing camp being started again. This will be the second healing camp for 30k. They stun funds. They're going to try and take him out. Leap of Faith already used. Pick it. Trying to get, is getting zoned out here. Great flailing swipe by Buds, though. That's going to be enough to save everyone. Unaverted. Trying to turn this onto Fury, who stepped up real far. That's the kill. They get the bear and the kill. They even face melt onto Yarel to stop her jumping away. Healing camp is picked up. Great lurking arm by Buds. And that's going to be a double kill. Going over to Wild Heart Esports, who immediately steal all momentum. That's a big play. 30k, they were looking really solid at this early stage, but Wadhaz just stole all the momentum in this game and set themselves up for a big push into the top lane. Let's see what they can do. The Protector available for them. They push their way forwards. Big play now for Wild Hearts. They decide not to push top. Looks like they might have the same idea here. They're going to try and take out mid on the way. But they're not stopping. Okay, there we go. They finally stop mid, but they're still going to rotate bot. Same strategy as 30k. End the game quick. Control bot. That's the third protector. That's when it really starts to get strong. That's keep value. That is the strat. That is the play. They try and rush it down. They're going to try and take down this fort. Push already going better than 30k's did. We've got a lot more reinforcement here. They are doing a, quite a bit of damage. Protector already dropped down to a third health. The siege is good. But level advantage, talent advantage for Wild Heart Esports here. Cassia, martial law. They try to focus 30k. They try to get Fury. Can't do it. Oh, it too. Leap of faith. Good job by Anduin. BBJ keeping the team alive. Fort taken out. Big lead taken now by Wild Heart Esports. Almost a full level lead here. Just under half a level. Tower camp spawning. They're going to try and steal and control. No. Pick it. Trying to bait him in. They do have Leo. <clears throat> in two up in 23 seconds. 16 is hit by 30k. Even talents. How aggressive a pit is Pitkit wanting to go? Lurking arm is good. Turret was taken, though. Bear is taken out. There's the boars unleashed. 
They get the Celestial Charge onto Pit Kid. Liam is the one who's dropped low. Zergling on the back line is deleted by Lee Ming. That's the reset. Angelic Armaments comes out, does not land. Turrets dropped by both teams, but two turrets held onto by 30k, whereas Wild Hearts burned all of theirs. 30k holding on, zoning away Wild Hearts, forcing them back. Pick it looks for Fury. They try to chase forward, Celestial Charge. Pick it in a little bit of trouble. Eats the arcade orb, but this cap will be stolen unless we see the God Mosh. Good face melt, prevents the jump. Leoric spawns back in, it's 5v4, it's 5v5 again, Light Bomb. It's going to be trying to be used. There's the Entomb as they try to force the counter engage. Holding the line on the point. Neemity able to get the objective. And suddenly gets pushed off the point with ETC down. Mosh Pit not used. They ha don't have their main frontliner. Down goes Zergling and unaverted. Completely zoned away from the fight. Uses Fend to try and escape. Stunned down by the bear as they look for more. Special charge is sidestepped by Buzz. But there's nothing he can do. Li Ming did die to the tower. But it's enough as they push their way in. Great fight by 30k, able to take out ETC at the exact moment they needed to, preventing that mosh. Eight seconds until he is alive. Ty is dead, but he will. his death was not in vain. His team now pushes in. They're able to get a great head start onto this. The fort's taken out. They've managed to even up the structures here, and they've set themselves up for the third objective. They have turrets for days now. They are in a position where they can control that bottom objective. They're going to probably try and get themselves a heal camp. They're in a fantastic position to just take this series. Support camp not taken yet, though. They choose to leave it. 30k. Just playing a little bit further back here. Going to ignore the support camp for now. No reason to fight 5v5 yet. They can see Leo in bot lane, though. Will they go as 5? Looks like they will. Crushing hope, by the way, for Leo. So that's your charge. See, there's him waiting in the bush. Smart by Fury. Sometimes it's good just to burn the ability like that in exchange for vision. Volcan being raced down. See, so yeah, the crushing hope and the unyielding despair. All about that percentage damage from Leo to try and race people down. Level 20 being crept towards by both teams, but the lead is currently in favor of 30k. They grab themselves yet another turret. They're really trying to extend their lead here. Trying to set themselves up for a final push. Top is being sieged. Pit Kid in the most defensive position possible here. Moving on the conveyor belt, he could turn around immediately. And make his way off the conveyor belt to safety using the conveyor belt as a speed boost to escape. It's the safest position. Also means everyone has to step onto the point very far, allowing your team a potential flank. Alright, plenty of items now available for 30k. Turrets for days. Two turrets looking for their third. They have a support camp as well. He's coming in. There's level 20, though, and that will be enough to force Wildheart off the point. Kill command. Glyph of faith. You see the Tower of Shah's elements for Li Ming. Bit a lot of extra burst here. Seraphim and imperviousness. Lots of extra sustain for the two holy frontliners. Level 20 is still quite a bit away for Wildhearts. They're just going to have to move back and defend. They're leaving Zergling. To try and clear this up because, of course, 30k. Seeing that we are such defensive Wild Hearts, they choose to try and set themselves up. Unable to do so, the rotation from Wild Hearts prevents them from getting that keep. So instead, the Protector is what they will do. Level 20 is achieved. No Buried Alive, by the way. They go with Burning Despair. No point Burning Buried Alive if it's gonna, people are just going to be pulled out of it. There's the Urban Shields. Big pickup. For the Anduin here. That's going to be so... That's For the Thrall here. It's going to keep his team alive so much. Might have to be used early. It is. And that keeps Zergling alive. They tank through with it. Massive shove. Keeping everyone back with controlled chaos. Mosh Pit with Torbus. It's interrupted so quickly. Pitkin with Mosh Pit down. They're all relying on controlled chaos. With Leo already taken out. Zergling trying to race it. But they cannot sustain. They are forced to back all the way up to the keep to get that extra body. As Zergling begins to regen his health and try and get back into this fight. They try to hold. 
The keep will fall. The question is how much else will fall? Can 30k use this protector to end the game? They make their way forward. Misha stun does not land. They try to take out Misha, but Misha's too tanky at this stage. Holding the line for the moment. Protector only and in it at the moment. And with Zergling respawning, they get Li Ming in it. Li Ming was looking for some siege. You can see what they're doing here. They're keeping the most vulnerable people in the Protector. So there's no counter opportunity from Wild Hearts. They can't just turn on the fight. Because they won't be able to get the big easy burst heroes. They back away. Protector 20 seconds left. Down to 14% health. They'll just siege from range. Dive back in. Leaming damage, out damaging the protector because it was on cooldowns. So Leaming abandoned the protector there to get that little bit of extra burst. With five seconds left, could they land a rocket punch? Yes, but it wasn't needed. They got it anyway. Now all five members alive, level 20 for both teams. Wild Hearts. Looking for an opportunity. Again, if Wild Hearts win, this series is over. 30k. Looking to take us to a game number five right now. Liam and Fury. Both in position. Objective being held. House is going to make it onto the point. They're coming from the side. Light bomb takes out Stokov with the healer down. That's going to be real bad for Wild Hearts here as they are forced off the point. But what Zergling is causing a lot of grief in the backline. Celestial Charge lands. Zergling focus down. There's the reset for Ty as they try to chase down Funz, who is untouched in this fight. He lands the root. It's the full retreat coming out. Pitkin may just have to drop the mosh defensively here as Fury looks for the engaged face melt for the zoning. Unverted focus. Down, Sensor Chance doesn't land. Moshpit gonna be attempted, but interrupted with the wave of force. But they do get Ural. That might have just saved their bacon here, picking up that kill. The wave of force again burned perfectly. Great positioning by Ty. Have a look at this. Look at where Ty is standing when this chase comes in. They chase them all the way back to the base. Zergling staying alive in the main game right now. But look at the positioning. Look how far back Ty is. They really look for unaverted, but Ty, he makes sure he stays back. You can see he even backs up an extra bit just in case that tour bus comes onto him. Playing that beautifully, really making sure that he is not the one caught out because he is the one with the most reliable Mosh interrupt. Very nicely played there. Beautifully done by 30k. They stay in it, they stay in it, but Wildheart Esports, they got a little bit of momentum back here trying to prevent that game number five. The 30k, they're keeping themselves in this series. They are the ones who need to win, because the series will end if not. Pit Kid scouts away. Scouts out, sees what he can find. So far, nothing. You see defensive positions set up by 30k. A lot of good work being done here to try and stay safe. Fury looking for Pit Kid. Disengage from Liam. Burning the Seraphim as well there to prevent themselves from being picked off. Item-wise, look at the differences. Three turrets all on the side of 30k. Nothing for Wild Hearts. They literally don't have items. They're fighting itemless and they're still holding. But they've got to start making these plays in the team fights. They can't just keep retreating and picking. They have to actually win the team fight eventually. Middle is the objective. Either team could take this and walk it bot lane to try and end the game. It's 30k. Make their way for the point. Five seconds until it activates. Liam and the Bear and Fury will be the ones to step onto the point first. They wait for their opportunity. Cassia ignoring armor in this fight. Going to be big here. Now 15 armor for Hasu and for Misha. Going to be really important here. That big shielding from Thrall in Tomb. They look for Fury. So that's your charge over the wall. Nicely done. Prevents the follow-up stun. Hasu on the conveyor belt to try and stay safe here. They try to make it. Pitkin stuns out Fury. Not enough for a follow-up. Pitkin sidesteps. Mosh Pit interrupted immediately by the Light Bomb. He dropped the, the Mosh Pit after the Light Bomb was activated, by the way. Bit of a misplay. Zergling backing up. Funds rooted. He's in the Earth Shield, but it's not enough. Tie ball lightning and bounces from Hasu, picks him up as well. A one for one and with Lee Ming gone, that's so much of the damage output of, uh, of 30k is taken away. Stream, come back to us. There we go. We're good. We're good. Nobody panic. Everybody disengaged. Clean feed started quite a bit there, everybody, but we're back. We're fine. 
Seraphim Jarel trying to get the isolated unaverted, but they turn it onto Fury. The drain hope from Zergling is causing a lot of grief. They're holding with Leeming down. So much of the damage is gone. Leap of Faith with the Glyph. Able to keep Liam safe. What a leap there. With the damage output of 30k missing. We see Wildheart's able to control. But in the meantime, this top camp does a lot of value. 11 seconds till Thrall, but they still had Cassia. They still have Leo. Huge damage outputs here. Nothing like that on the side of 30k. All they have is Rexar, Light Bomb. It's Zergling who's able to Wraith walk away, but the cap is still going to be taken by 30k. And they gave up the percentage. They gave up their control of the point during that. Lee Ming has respawned. They look to try and blow up Pitkit. They cannot find it. Fun's going to clear out the waves. Top keep still taking pressure. They might have to sacrifice Top Keep for this. The objective is still being taken. Top Keep will go down. A healing Pulse is going to be picked up by the side of 30k. They know that they can just back off the point and re-engage this. They have Lee Ming, they have Lee Ming again. Top Keep will 100% die with two Catapults. Going to be pushing onto the core afterwards. Here is the play. Face Spell. Zergling dodges the Arcade Orb. It's the last fight for Wild Hearts. If they lose this, they lose the game. The 30k. They win this, they stay in the season in the series. If they lose, then it is all over for this week. They back up. That's a good celestial charge. It's not enough for lightning. With the infinite light is out infinite lightning. It still causes a lot of damage. The core is beginning to take damage for Wild Hearts, but they hold the point. They force 30k back. This could be the last push. The janitor is porting, but he interrupted his port. Will he hold? Will he hold? He has to stay. They have to commit. They have to survive. Liam is dive deep. He's taken out. Moshpin, this time they get it. Pick it, but he's taken out by the altars of BBJ. Hasu dropped low. He feigns death. Zergling is going to get picked off here. It's an intense fight. Two for one. They look for Fury. Funds dodges it. The core is taking damage. Bear taken out. Protector will be grabbed as quickly as possible. They're bringing it back home. They have to defend. There are six catapults on the core and nothing that Wild Heart can do. 30k. Winions take the victory and keep 30k in this series as we are heading to a game number five. What a series. Insane play coming in from 30k. Holding the point. Wild Hearts, you can see them confused. Double port interrupt onto Zergling. The first time himself and the second time he believed he had to take the fight and just get the kills as fast as possible. But that sure proved to be a fatal error. They could not get the kills quick enough. And as such, they lost too much health on the core that they could not rotate home in time, even with the protector. That was game number four in favor of 30k. We have a fifth game of this series. One intense series so far between these two teams. This composition, the Raged Assassin Rexar, still undefeated. Still undefeated. Why are you worried about you about Udal, Yonti? Yonti, sorry. What a performance so far by these teams. An insane series. Let's see what we can do. Here comes the talents. That glyph of faith at the end was big. BBJ with that glyph of that glyph of faith carried so many saves for his team. And Liam using that seraphim. Unstoppable to engage here. Very nicely done. Very nicely done indeed. But the mosh pit was attempted by Pitkid. I love the tour bus. They finally landed it, but he took so much damage, finally setting it up that BBJ killed him with auto attacks. He nearly bought his team enough time, but it was not enough. Valiant attempt by both teams, but it didn't work out. We are heading to a game at number five. The mainstream will be having another break, because they always do. As such, we will talk about a different player and some more stuff. Alrighty. So we're gonna be getting ready for game number five as soon as possible. 30k 
proving that they will not be giving up. Before we talk about players, let's talk about the table, what this will do to the table. No matter what, one of these teams will win in the next game, so we already know the, uh, the end scores of this series. So, if 30k win, their final score will be 11 and 8. If, if Wildheart were to lose, their final score would be 12 and 8. This would put Wildheart ahead of 30k in terms of map score. They would be allowed to avoid it. I do not believe coaches are allowed on in-game comms. I believe they are allowed on out-of-game. So, if Wildheart wins now, if sorry, if Wildheart loses, they will still be ahead of 30k on map score. They will have lost on versus. I'm pretty sure map score takes priority there. But I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to see. <coughs> Excuse me. If Wildheart wins, they will, of course, go to 4 and 1 at a score of 13 and 7. This will put them in a strong position and hold on to that second place. Only we're really, really having to worry about crowd control. We'll be playing tomorrow against Simplicity in terms of competition. Simplicity could also begin to catch up, but it's not so bad. In fact, their next competition, if that's the case, if Wildheart will be able to beat out 30k here, will be crowd control and Oxygen. Oxygen, of course, playing uh, later today against Granite Gaming. That's where we could begin to see maybe Wildheart's sneaking into that first place position. It's possible. But 30k, they are fighting for the top three right now. If they can do it, should be good. So then, we're going to be getting ready to jump into that game at five as soon as possible. But again, the mainstream shall be waiting a bit because they need a break every two games for sponsor requirements. And I'm sure for other reasons as well. Give the casters a little bit of a break. Three casters need more breaks than one man. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I loved it when we had a lot, quite a lot of breaks on HTC, honestly, because we did a lot of casting back then. <coughs> I am kidding. So, we talked about Hasu from the side of 30k. So, let's look at Wildheart Esports here. And let's talk about one of their maybe lesser known players in the form of Unaverted. Putting on quite a solid performance. He is a bit more of an inexperienced player. Only really starting again post-HGC era. But did put on some great performances. He did play in 2018 in the Open Division. Where he played on the team Reborn. Now, Reborn did actually perform very, very well in the Open Division. Playing very well. They eventually renamed themselves to Free... Uh, sorry, he eventually left Reborn, becoming a member of Freebirds. Which is very interesting. He was on Reborn for a while, getting fifths to eighths in most of the series that he played in. And then eventually in the playoffs, moving on to Freebirds, where they were defeated by, uh, they were defeated by TLR. No, sorry, they were defeated by Psystorm Gaming. Psystorm Gaming, of course, went on to play in the Crucible with Scythe Esports. And Freebirds, they then lost in the lower bracket as well to Divination, who lost to Reborn. Unlucky. But unaverted, he did not give up after that series. He was able to, pl to continue playing into 2019 in Division S, finishing, f uh, finishing in first in qualifier number two. Qualifying with his team, uh, Comanche Power Train. Very hard name to say. And he also finished some really good positions in Fight Nights. Playing with Team Good Guys for a while with BKB. Winning Fight Night 6 and 2nd in Fight Night number 7. For a while there, he then played on Inting for Globes. Placing middle of the pack in quite a lot of Heroes hype. And of course, in Division S, in the actual main season, they finished 5th to 6th with Team Good Guys. However, he was able to find some victory in the Heroes Hype North American Cup in 2019, where they were able to win quite effectively, taking, as he had moved on to Inting to Globes by then, taking out Team Good Guys, performing quite well. He's mo That is the only first place he's really achieved outside of a fight night and that qualifier. So he has been a very middle-of-the-pack player, but it's where he really started to turn around was in 2020. 2020 is where he stepped up. In Heroes Lounge Div uh, Division S Season 2, he finished third. Very solid position with his team Perfect Gems. He then stepped it up with Quarantine in the Heroes Lounge Storm Division, where they played very effective in the qualifiers for that, where they finished third, second, third, and did incredibly well to get so far. Really finished well before eventually being picked up by Regen. 
to make his way into the division, into Storm Division in the end anyway, where they finished 5th to 6th, really putting on quite the performance, eventually losing to Team Alexander. So it's 2020 has been a massive rising star setup here. 2020 has been really good for Unaverted. Let's see if we can continue to grow with Wild Heart Esports here. Of course, they finished 5th to 8th in the Icebreaker Tournament as they did lose in round number 1. But that's proving to be very, very different in this season. Let's see if Unaverted can change this round. Let's see if he can continue to grow in strength. Continue to grow in talent because he is a very strong player and 2020 has been his year to show that it'll be fun to see fun to see if they can keep that going as we are going to be awaiting our fifth game of the series in the meantime as a reminder everybody if you're enjoying the show maybe consider dropping a subscription or a, su a subscription or a donation if you're watching on Twitch, there's bits, there's the Streamlabs donation the link below, all very appreciated. Make sure to check out my Humble Store affiliate link to buy yourself some discounted games this holiday season, and I get a bit of a kickback on that. You don't pay anything extra just for ordering through me. And if you're on YouTube, donation link in the description below, and also there are now memberships. Become my first member on YouTube! They've only just come out, so it would be appreciated if you could show some support that way. As the draft has started, that made me jump there for a sec. Draft has started, ladies and gentlemen, as Wild Hearts going to be banning out the Cassia. So, going to be having Cassia banned away. 30k now. They take out the Medivh. We know Wild Hearts can play it now. It's a little scary to deal with. Might as well just get rid of it as quick as possible. See how we go. Deathwing taken out. <coughs> Keep him removed from the board. He's been a bloody nuisance. He actually has an exactly 50% win rate in CCL so far. But he's still quite popular, and the teams that know how to play him do play him very well. That that uh, score will actually be a little higher than it is because he did just win two games today, and these stats are from pre the series. 30k now. Final ban for them. They took out Rexar. Hey, it's been a nuisance all series. Might as well get rid of it. 60% win rate so far in CCL for Rexar and for Wild Hearts. This is, his first, this is the first day he's showing him, but he's already been a nuisance. But that just lets Chromie through. That is dangerous. 100% win rate for Wild Hearts on this Chromie. And Chromie, as we've mentioned before, is one of the most annoying heroes in the game right now. For a ridiculous pick rate of appearing in 69% of all uh, being banned in 69% of all games and played 88% of them as in, as in being picked or banned. Currently only has a 40.9% win rate, but that can change very quickly because she does really give a lot of pressure. But it's going to give Tykes back to Hasu, the potential Neo Steel plating to protect Hasu from the burst of Chromie. And they get Johanna. Johanna plus Chromie is a tough matchup. That would make sense. Sorry, my chair is very creaky. Johanna plus, Chromie, Johanna plus Chromie is a tough matchup that would be hard to play around. So instead, they just choose to steal it away. That allows Yorel to go over to Zergling, and they get buds on Uther finally. Uther has been a nuisance so far in every game that Wild Hearts have played it. It pops back in now. Another exactly 50% win rate hero. Let's see what Wild Hearts can do with it. They do love that Uther. It's rewarded them very, very well. Quite a few times now. They're okay with their ban. They take out Leo. They're afraid of that triple front line. Makes sense. With both Tychus and Johanna trying to just take some of that damage from Chromie, the last thing they need is percentage damage, eating through all of their front line. Now then, Wild Hard Esports. Their last ban. They ban Abatha. That's actually smart. They could very easily swap Tychus. On to Tai here and give that Abatha to Hasu. Very easy change around for them. It would be a smart pick. 
What are we going to see instead? With Abathur gone, this could still be a Vikings game in theory, but Vikings are Dichromies. Sounds like a shooting range to me. 30k now. They get the Anduin again. Really loving to see that back since the medallion has been removed. And they get Li Ming on the board. It's another potential Falling Sword Light Bomb play. It works so well in the earlier series. Let's see if 30k can pull it off again. This time, though, there is an Uther. Much better at Burst Protection. Has a potential cleanse, although uh, Buds really prefers that Guardian of Ancient Kings. It's been a pretty consistent pick for him. Double healer. No surprise there. And Gazlo makes it into the game. So they do go... That is a sort of mage build Gazlo in theory. They could run it as melee. Really depends. Funds could play this two different ways and it would cause a lot of confusion. So I expect that's probably Pit Kid going to be swapped onto that Uther. And Bud's on the Stukov. Very interesting. That gives him a lot of flexibility here. And Blaze going to finish this up. The classic Johanna Blaze combo. Great for lots of crowd control. They're going to try and punish out that Uther. Uther, though, has great counter to this, so it's going to be hard to deal with. Gaslo. Interesting to see them show up. We don't actually see them that often these days, especially. In terms of statistics, again, another 50% hero. 8 and 8 has been, uh, has been picked or banned in 22% of all games. So that's pretty decent. That number is steadily going down because, again, he hasn't been picked in a while. But he's here. Gaslo shows up. This will be Uther main tank with uh, Yorel as offlane and Stukov as the healer. This is the expected setup. We'll see if anything changes with that, if anything goes really chaotic and weird. So... We're going to be getting ready to jump into game number five, ladies and gentlemen. Winner of this will be the winner of the series and will move up the board. Wild Hearts looking to try and catch up to the side of Oxygen Esports. 30k. They're looking to make some distance between themselves and try and make themselves into that top three. Wild Hearts with the Gazzo on the board and they're starting off with the more mage-based style. So much siege, so much interrupt for the objective, so much pressure with those rocket boots, the extra bomb range. They now also have Time Walker's Pursuit for the vision. That extra vision is going to be big. Quarterback, though, on the other side, fantastic interrupt, and they have Li Ming. Both teams with fantastic interrupts for the objective to try and prevent the other from gaining any momentum. Uther, yet to pick level one. Gonna go with Silver Touch. Gonna be a more Holy Shock based Uther, which is the main maximum sustain you can get out of an Uther. Buds needs to heal Pit Kid, because Pit Kid just got chonked. Missed Pit Kid, hit Zergling. So yeah, it is, it is Pit Kid on the Stukov, interestingly enough. Very interesting to see. Pit Kid's usually the main tank player. Buds playing the Uther. They're just going with double, they're just going with double support here. Both of them are very sustainy, but very hard supports to kill. Bit of a trade back and forth as both teams try to clear the wave. Zoning coming out from funds very effectively. Chromie already hits level f uh, her level 4 talent because, of course, she gets it two levels earlier. And we're going to see the speed boost and nerfing for her. Speed boost for her team slows for the enemies. Wave's cleared out. Siege camps into the bot lane. Slightly quicker by 30k as Wildheart will begin chasing. 30k, they try to pick off Yorel. Unable to get the full engage there. As such, Zergling gets away. Stays safe. Good damage. Very quick clear onto the mercenary camp of 30k. Great advantage taken by Wildheart as, as a couple of their sappers make it in. Gate taken out. Here comes the counter engage. Fury trying to set up. Unable to do so. Ty backs away. Good damage. Condemn. Focus. Fury tanking through. Taken out though. The slow is so effective there. The Stukov able to set that up quite nicely. Good job by Pit Kid. 
We still see Rocket Socket coming in for funds, meaning we may see them going into a Robo Goblin based build. We'll have to see. If not, Rocket Socket is still the highest sustain you can get. They don't re They could have still gone percentage damage on level four, and you could argue that would be quite strong for them against Blaze and, of course, against Johanna. But they choose to believe that that is not important. One good spread coming in for the Stukov. Just keep spamming out those heals. Keep the team alive. Defense onto the bottom point. <coughs> Excuse me. Unsurprising there. Buds will be interrupted by Ty. It's all about the siege for now. And Zergling actually interrupted by Liam, interestingly, interestingly enough, delaying the channel. This is still going to beat Liam, much so than the rest of his team. Funds just avoiding the route there. Bot channel was not completed. It's still going here. Orb comes out. Good body blocks. Buds gets the turn and advantage taken by Wild Heart Esports. Scrap Blazers coming in for the Gaslow. Standard stuff here. This is still a classic ranged build. You can still do this with Gravo Bomb, where you combine the Scrap Blazers. You could you could have gone for double laser, but that's only really good. Excuse me, with the percentage damage. The idea here is to basically use Rocket Socket to keep yourself alive. Get your Scrap back with Goblin Fusion so that you can keep spamming those turrets. You go for a superior schematics to massively increase your damage output in team fights. And then you can go for the Arc Reactor at level 16 for the big damage out for big zoning control. Hasu. Knocked away by Zergling. BBJ. Much less luck. Completely caught in that slowing sounds, which of course has got a level 8 for Chromie here. Using that trait. And the Sappers make their way in. Two onto the bell tower. A lot of damage. Good grenade damage coming out from Hasu, though. Trying to keep the team pressured. Your Alan Blaze still fighting up top. Trying to keep themselves sustained. Boss spawns are not going to be too important as of yet. Liam. Still being interrupted. Still being chased down. Running back to his base. This is the attempt at a gank. Won't land it. Double altars up in top lane right now. No bell towers been claimed by either team. I mean, this will likely just be a one-for-one -one trade. I mean, the lead will stay in favor of Wild Heart Esports. By the way, Uther, Silver Touch... But did it go for any of the other Q-based talents? So no Holy Shock for the maximum sustain. Just Silver Touch, which of course does increase the range of the uh, of the Devotion by 50% and reduces its mana cost to 50, which is actually a pretty big deal in terms of healing numbers, in terms of keeping Uther sustained a bit. But he then went for the Pursuit of Justice and the Hand of Protection. Disengage and sustain. That little bit of an extra cleanse is going to be very important. And a Divine Shield. We do see Grammar Bomb. Feels good. This build is pretty ubiquitous between evil side. So not too surprising to see that. Could have very much been either. Only really talents you can, only talents you can really tell when stuff's going to change is level 16 where you would see Overclock. And of course level 10. You can sometimes see on level 4, easy piece of dimensional ripper, but that's less likely. Here's the grammar bomb. Focus. Big wombo, but your rail zergling. Knocking BBJ out of the Gaslo combo, meaning BBJ survived a couple extra seconds, but the damage output was still too high. And Wild Hearts take the kill. 30k on the defensive now. Ty caught by the weighted pustule, forced to back away. Camp stolen away by Wild Hearts. They keep the momentum going, keep the pressure on. Attempt to get to Zergling, pressure it. Grenade to zone out the camp. They want to pull as many of the camps to this side so they can just clear them safely. Funds protecting the rest. Zappers all taken out. Liam with those incinerator gauntlets helping out there. Stunned by Buds, not enough for a follow up. That is slowing Sands plus Gaslow is an absolute nuisance here. 
30k really struggling to find their option to engage. Single ult of phase. Fury's made it forward, but in the meantime, BBJ is being zoned away by Zerkling, uncontested. Teams being split in half. Zerkling causing so many issues. I did not know that stopped the Q, but there's the focus anyway. Liam gonna get the bunker. Here comes the Falling Sword Condemned to try and set themselves up. The Odin used to try and take him out, but Zergen trying to chase down Liam on the back line. Liam looking low. Leap of Faith used to the Fury, and that's a full disengage coming out from 30k. They cannot stay for this fight. Fury in a little bit of trouble. There comes the Gravo Bomb. Not enough for a kill. But the channel definitely gonna be going over to Wildheart here. Fury takes a lot of damage from Chromie. This is the pressure of Chromie. Threads the needle, finds the kill. Fourth kill of the game for Wild Heart Esports. As 30k are beginning to fall further and further behind. I wonder if we can get that for I wonder if we can get that again. Yes, we can. Fury, he tries to tank, takes so much damage. Eats the full Dragon Breath. One, two, three. And then unaverted. Snipe right around BBJ, who was really trying to get in the way. But got shut down. Beautifully executed. Unaverted. Like we said, rising talent. Showing why they deserve to be in CCL. Piling on the pressure. Well met. And a good bit of anti-damage for the Kaldors. There's the leap. There's the... Light Bomb onto the Falling Sword. Grabber Bomb finds no one. Bunker used to protect Fury. Gives him that extra 25 armor as they force their way forward. Time Trap was used. Fury tags it. Condemn Divine Shield used to keep Yarel alive. They can't fight anymore. Ty dropped too low. He will get healed up. They cannot chase. With level 13 versus level 13. We do see 30k. They hold in this fight. Sustaining one more time. The Spirit Schematics is on the board for funds. That's a massive damage output. We saw the slows already coming in from Tigers. That lead rain. It's causing quite a few issues to the backline members of Wild Hearts. They get caught out. An intense game. The Spirit Schematics. That extra attack range for the turrets is so huge for zoning. It actually allows the turrets of Gaslo to outrange the core. That's how insane the actual range increase on Spirit Schematics is. Stun. Onto Fury. Chase him down. Iron skins up. He tanks most of the damage. There's the charge from Liam. They look for Zergling. Light Bomb. Falling Sword gets the backline. Falling Sword to keep them CC, but none of the damage dealers can get there as BBJ and Ty are completely zoned away by Zergling. Zergling causing so many issues here. Gets a big stun, but he's a lot of damage from Ty. Channel coming in from Buds. Fury is too low. Interrupt one from Hasu, but that's all they will get. Fury eats even more damage, but will survive. Disengage from 30k. Another channel for Wild Hearts. Core down to 20 health. 50% off of that core. Fury gets the condemn on the Zergling, prevents the stun. The Bell Tower taken by Wild Heart Esports. They keep the momentum going. Wild Hearts looking really strong right now. They have a 12 health lead on the core of 30k. 30k looks to try and engage. They try to get onto Zergling, but Zergling aren't defended it. They look for the counter to try and pick off Blaze early. They've got him in the lurking arm. They can't hold him there, though. The Slowing Sands cuts off the escape of the grenade output onto Buzz. It's a little bit too much. Liam, isolated from his team, goes for a long wraparound escape. Zergling chases, but BBJ keeps them sustained. Hasu is low. Falling Sword onto the back line. One last chance at the counter engages. Hasu makes his way forward. Divide Shield keeps them alive. Bud survives and they will back away. No one can be killed in this fight. Zergling staying a little long but it is a Yorel. Yorel will be able to jump away and leave if needed but they will just survive the fight for now. Insane fight between these two teams. Well played. By the side of, of Wild Hearts and 30k. Keep him alive. Great disengage and escape, especially from Liam. Able to avoid getting caught out quite a few times and dying. Bottom bell tower being reclaimed, but it's Li Ming. She can see, but she doesn't race fast. Meaning this will not be available for the objective. Meaning this is a, a potential 15 shot onto the core of 30k if they don't get a channel. As such, Liam makes the way up. Light bomb. The focus. They look for Pickett. Cleanse came out to keep Pickett alive. Ty dives away. 
takes a lot of damage. Liam has to stay top. They have to get a channel. They have to prevent at least some of these shots from going over. They have to also prevent these sappers from making their way in. Liam does a good job of that. BBJ, stunned. Dragon Breath, dead. Grab a bomb with the kill. That's going to be 10 health off the core. Down to 10. They keep pushing forward. We have that bomb cooldown reduction for funds now. There are now two ways that he can go with this build. He can either go for the he can either go for the miniature black hole for massive wombo potential, or he can go for the bomb toss to siege in and zone away the members of 30k. There is another way he can actually go with raiding scrap here to just try and spam those turrets, but in this case, I think it will either be what the bot it will be one of the bomb talents. Push forward. Turrets being set up. Sap's trying to make their way in. Odin has to be used to zone. Half a level lead right now in favor of Wild Hearts. Odin now being used to try and siege the keep. They can't step up too far. Damage output is too strong. They can't afford to get caught out here. They're being zoned away from the keep so hard. The Odin getting almost no damage. Hasu desperately looking, finding nothing. Ty finds Zergling. They're just going to try and finish him off. Zergling and Ty trying to take out... Sorry, Liam and Ty trying to take out Zergling. They're falling sword it. They find nothing. And that's a lot of... That's a big heroic used. No value. Bottom bell tower. Not taken as well. That is a big disaster. Charge comes in. Ty. Avoids the fight. Fury. Sends out the hammers. Tower's coming in. Funds. Avoiding too much of Hasu's damage. Pick it takes a big chunk. They try to channel. This will be five shots onto the core. Ten if they could get top as well. But Liam is holding that. Liam down to half health though. They're trying to delay onto both. 30k. This is lethal for them. If they let this go through. If both of these are taken from them. They lose. Hasu. They try to turn onto Zergling again. But Zergling is proving to be too difficult. Channel. Trying to be attempted on the bottom lane. Ty delays one more time. But he cannot do it. Buds gets it. They're going to try and take the fight though. But no. They can't just ignore top. They can't. Hasu has to fight it. They instead turn. Divide shield. Use onto pick it. Keep him alive. We see the wraparound from Zergling. Trying to get onto Hasu. Ops to try and zone the fight. No deaths on either side. If this top altar goes. So to 30k. As wild hard esports push in. They don't have 20. They might. Might not need it. Buzz tries to channel. Siege coming in. Odin running out of duration already. The bolt, the Dragon Breath comes in. Great play by Zergling. Ty dropping low. If he gets taken out here, that's so much of the damage output. He goes over the wall. He aggroes the camp, but he will get away. Heal comes in. Channel from Funds. Wrap around from Fury. That's their main tank, but he gets the interrupt. He will disengage. Liam is dropping very, very low. No bunker available. Fury, the first to fall. Buzz sustaining so much. The double healer. Too much for them to deal with. 30k cannot hold as Ty wraps around one more time. He's looking for Buns, but Buns is going to run him down. Quick kill by Ty, but BBJ is gone. Liam is low. Hasu is still alive. Hasu is still fighting. Liam sneaks away, teleporting out of the fight. They still have the grenades of Hasu. They still have the shots of Lee Ming, who's being chased down so hard. Grenade comes out, but Hasu being engaged on and chased down by Funds. They're all reliant on Ty now. Ty is the only one who can stop this but Ty is zoned away that is GG as we will see Wild Heart Esports take game number five and the series well played by Wild Hearts. They take the series and they hold on to their top three spots and move themselves just that little bit closer to Oxygen Esports who will be playing in the next series. What a performance from these two teams. 30k fighting tooth and nail. You asked where the Tychus was picked. It was picked first in the first rotation. But what a play from Wild Hearts. The double support comp convincingly able to win that. Beautifully done. The Stukov Uther, so hard to kill. They couldn't break through. One kill to eight in the end. The sustained output was just so strong. And Zergling was never dealt with. Zergling put on a clinic there. 
beautifully done. Beautifully executed, wonderfully used. And yeah, the play they did there, they didn't need an engage really. Gravel Bomb was there for the engage, but mostly they just zoned. They had Slowing Sands as the main engage. Your Rel's a little bit, or Slowing Sands as the main zoning. But the fact is, they knew that 30k had to fight them on certain objectives. So why did they need engage when they could just control the objective so hard that 30k could never step up? And that's what we saw there. Their only engage, like you said, is Gravo Bomb because they didn't need anything else. They had so much control over the objective, which is where 30k had to be to not lose the game, that they controlled it that way. A very unique style, and this is why we love watching Wild Hearts, that they have this really unique way of thinking about the game that is completely different to any other team in the CCL. And as such, they're able to achieve victory in this series number one. Very impressive, very nicely done. And as such, we're going to be preparing for our second series of the day. We'll jump back to me as I set up the break screen quickly. But as a reminder, our second series of the day is going to be Oxygen Esports. And they are going to be playing against Granite Gaming. A rough matchup. Granite Gaming. This is going to be their toughest opponent as Oxygen Esports are still currently the best team. Let's see if they can make a comeback. Let's see if they can make their way back onto the board. It's going to be good. See you later, Yonity. Thank you very much for stopping by. Very appreciated indeed. So I'm just setting up my break screen. So that you guys can be all ready and excited with me. If there's a if there's an interview on the mainstream, I will take you over to that. Catch the rerun or the VOD tomorrow. Very appreciated. Hope to see you there and hope to see you next week if you pop by for that as well. Very appreciated indeed. So, and then it's Granite Gaming. And I know where their where their logo is. I know where I kept that. There we go. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, let's check on the uh, mainstream, see if we have our interview. Yes, we do. So, I'm going to jump over to that. And so, you guys can sit, listen to the interview. And when we come back, it will be time for us. It will be time for our second series of the day. So, enjoy yourselves over there. I'll be see you all in a moment. Up to about second bands or whatever. Um, and we're about 75, 25. And as it goes on, it's less and less. So probably towards the end, it's 50, 50. And then we kind of have an idea because a lot of teams aren't flexible too much in their drafting. And we have a good idea of what they're going to pick. So towards the end, we're just flexing for the counter picks. And we, we have a strong idea of what they're going to pick. So we kind of uh, trolled a couple games here and there, a uh, couple couple drafts and things like that. But we're just learning and testing new things because you only get so many scrims a week. So it's, it's fun to try some new things and you know the games. That's Fair interesting. One, one more quick question. Uh, sure. how, how much of it is, uh, like, how much of you showing heroes that other teams haven't looked at much yet and comps is you trying to entertain the fans of the Heroes Heart CCL? Uh, and how much of it is you actually believing that you know things that other teams don't? Uh, I'm going to go with 50 50 because I don't want to expose any strategies. Uh, we are already <laughs> prepping. Uh, I know uh, this is one of the harder weeks for us. Um, we're already starting to prep for uh, playoffs. So that's something in mind. We're hiding still things. We have a lot of strategies that we want to do. And it's a lot of fun, but we can't show it till later on. So you have to sit tight cool. until the playoffs. Respect. Bahamut, so any, any questions out of that? You know I'm going to ask about – no. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're prepping your Cho'Gal for playoffs. I get it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that one. I really want to know, though, because you're, you're talking about prep, and, and Grubby hit on this a little bit, but going into 30K, what was – did you have heroes or players that you were specifically targeting? Because in that Towers of Doom game that we just saw, it almost seemed like your targets consistently was BBJ because there's no – you can't self-cleanse. You can't self – uh, leap of faith was that kind of the game plan or was it when the opportunities presented themselves you went for those kills uh i don't think anyone's good <laughs> i think anyone's okay. only good into leo and tomb so i think picking mm -hmm. anyone there was a little troll with how many how strong supports are nowadays mm -hmm. uh and picking a support like that uh it needs a lot of protection and towers of doom is a big map so i was able mm -hmm. to you know get a lot of flanks as url and uh, punish him for picking anduin because you know anduin can save other people but he has a hard time saving himself so I gotta say really quickly that the the plays that you had zergling on that URL on this last game, you were constantly flanking into the team, constantly on BBJ. And I noted it throughout the game. It was really, really well played from you. I just, you. I, I gotta give you hats off for that one. All right, well, before we let you go, zergling any final shout outs real quick. Uh, yeah, uh, 
I actually have a little thing for that. Uh, shout outs to Espionage VR for being our sponsor. Uh, shout out to wildheartgg.com where you can buy merchandise. Uh, I believe we have some new merch that you guys can check out. Um, the pack, which is basically in my team. I'm really happy that they're on our team. And I'm happy for them to get the dub today. Uh, the fans and you guys casting the games. Also, like to shout out my girlfriend for supporting me. And then uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you, guys. All right. Gotta love it. Oh, Thanks for and stopping mom. by. Oh, oh, and Fun's mom. Okay, I can't forget that. <laughs> can't forget about <laughs> that. Sorry. I was going to thank her if you weren't. Don't worry about okay. it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Circling. Congrats again on the win.